When did you put them? Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Oh, sorry. I, I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please be seated. Welcome to the 24 November 2014 Town of Hampton Board of Selectmen's meeting. Roman 1, public comment period. Those wishing public comment, please. Not at all. Vic, you don't need to ask permission to do anything, please. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm still recuperating as the town manager, probably tell you from little leg injuries. Uh, very short. Uh, my name is Victor Marco. I live at 11 Milburn Avenue in Hampton, obviously. Uh, real quick, uh, I came to work for the town of Hampton in 1971, which was 43 years ago. Uh, probably older <laughs> than you, Rusty. <laughs> and I came to work here soon after receiving my uh, degree from Bentley College in Accounting, so I took it upon myself for no other reason but knowledge to follow the budget process these 43 years. And I think I'm pretty well versed on the budget. In addition to the police department, when I was in the various positions there, I assisted in preparing the budget uh, for quite some time and understand the expenditures. Uh, I want to thank uh, Chairman Bean for the explanation he did about a month ago on the budget. It's probably the best I heard in 43 years uh, for the general public. And, and the only reason I brought up how long I've worked here is so I don't sound a little bit too out of whack here when I make a few comments. I, and I also brought up the, a years back uh, about having public comment at the beginning of a meeting rather than at the end, because that way people could talk on subjects that were in the agenda and get your, your feelings out to you before you voted on it. Uh, one thing I have noticed is very disturbing to me is that I happened to lis listen to a, a spokesman, Mr. Silverdick, a few weeks ago uh, stand up here. He has been in the town in various positions for quite some time. He's the chairman of the committee that handles our trust funds, for better words said. So he knows exactly what, what, what goes on. And he stood up here and kind of lectured you about taking $100,000 out of our reserve account is one of the items that he talked about, uh, leaving the impression, I think, in the general public that somehow we're taking a million dollars away from them, somehow. You know? And I don't think the general public understands that that's money that was unspent from previous budgets, I remember the town manager coming to work here whenever you did. I think we only had $300,000, $400,000 in our reserve account. We were in deep, deep doo-doo. And it took you to explain that to us. And over the course of those five or six, how many years has it been? Long enough. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we've developed a, a fund to well over $5 million, you know. Uh, about 160, uh, excuse me, 600000 at up to date. I don't know about this year comes from the reimbursement of the medical insurance fund from that, that whole suit, and we still have more money coming from that. And that saved the taxpayers not only 600000 plus, could be over a million. Uh, so some of that, uh, that $100,000, if you want to use it, it's just reimbursing the taxpayer for money they already paid. You know, and it's just using some of the money that they've coughed up already. I mean, we're only required to carry 5%, I think, you know, 5 to whatever. But we could throw two more money in and they are still being within the, the limits. And it's good that we have reserve. We also have about $18 million in trust funds, you know, that I have no idea why we can't spend it or anything, but that's beyond the point. Uh, but here's Mr. Silverdick, who's in charge of all that and leaves that impression, then comes back the week later and wants to re-explain to you of a document that he gave you that you didn't have time to go over when he first presented it. <laughs> and so I just, I'm a little bit uh, disturbed by that. So I went and I read his minutes, and I'm going to be real quick. 
the October minutes of the finance committee, as they're called, he's the chairman, uh, talked about this, that, and this, and he introduced a member of the audience. They had one member of the audience, which was our former chairman, uh, Mr. Nichols. And somehow during the conversation, he became part of the committee. And he gave a recitation for how long, knows, I don't know, on his uh, presumption of where we could be if we ever hit the bottom again, as we did in 2007, 2008. And through that presentation, somehow, we, there was a recommendation made to take $750,000 out of our, our uh, account and transfer from bond, uh, from the, uh, let's say, stock market to the bond market because we lost $100,000 know, out of $18 million. And he wasn't, I, am I under the impression that if someone's going to be rep represented and join in the conversation, they have to make an appointment? He was not on the agenda, so I was not prepared to have him go up and talk the way he did, and then then have them vote the way they did, <laughs> you know. And, and the second thing I have to ask is Mr. Silverdick was concerned about expenditure of funds. He never made any suggestion, and a lot of people do this, of where we could save money, where he thinks there could possibly be a savings, okay? And, you know, Mr. Silverdick took about 25 minutes at first. <laughs> the last thing I have to say about that is that uh, I also noticed that they raised the f fee that the investment counselor gets to $25,000, which is about a 50% increase. So I think we could save some money if he wants to save about $8,000, they could get, save it right there. Uh, the people that I work with at the, at the uh, park a lot receive 10 cents an hour. They average 25 hours a week, they, they got $2.50. You know, so just to let you know the, the difference. So I, I wish you guys could, and ladies, excuse me, could make some kind of reply. He, they, people realize that you can't answer them. You can't even say anything I'm saying, right, and reply to me. So it leaves false impressions sometimes with the general public that what is spoken is truth to the bottom line. And they might not listen for the next two weeks. So if there's some way you can address that, when there's something obvious that's out of whack, that uh, make it clearer to the general public that maybe what you heard last week isn't quite the way it is. And I want to thank you for all you do. And Mr. Chairman, you've done the next, in my opinion, after 44 years, you've been the best. Mr. Marco, thank you for your service to the town. Happy thank Thanksgiving. You. Hey, Vic. Thank you. Vic. Yes. Just so you know, I'm not as old as you. <laughs> <laughs> I thought years of service. But I, did, I did stop in the town in 73 on the beach crew, so. <laughs> well, I beat you then. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you again, everybody. Good night, Vic. Thank you. Further public comment. Further public comment. Seeing now, uh, uh, Roman II, this is, a, a, I think, an exciting night. This is kind of uh, um, executive leadership and investment in the town, infrastructure, and uh, those things that uh, we dire uh, are in dire need of uh, addressing. Uh, this will sure. be the uh, 2015. Can I just jump in? I know we do. We usually do the community calendar thing real quick. Can I do a quick attaboy? Okay, we're going to stand by. Sorry, to stand by. Bad. Bump plan. Go ahead. <laughs> I just uh, I want to recognize. I mean, uh, you know, our, our our town employees do a tremendous job with things, and and I think um, it's worthy to note that uh, one of our selectmen, who was a former town employee, uh, found himself in a situation where um, an individual needed assistance, and he jumped right into that assistance and began performing CPR. I just, uh, I believe that's an outstanding thing that needs to be recognized, and I want to just take a moment and say, Rusty, thank you. You know, you could take the guy out of the fire department, but not the fire department out of the guy, right? <laughs> so thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. <laughs> and, and having, having uh, um, addressed that so nicely, um, please, community calendar, do we have anything? Does anybody else have anything? I, I have one quick. Okay. Uh, not very nice article in the Hampton Union, and children warmed by firefighters' gifts, and it shows uh, uh, the uh, Jason Newman and, and Brian Ackerley uh, helping the youngsters raising money for the little ones for, for warm coats. 
for the winter. Uh, just another Good. under the table, something you don't see all the time, but uh, wonderful charitable participation and giving from the members of the fire department. Thank you, ma'am. Sir? No, just uh, it's been an active week with the party for uh, <laughs> Jamie Sullivan, and it was quite quite an event. Everyone was really very impressed. They were ever very impressed, I think, um, about how the, uh, Maggie Hess and the governor got up and spoke and talked in length about how lucky we are to have Jamie uh, staying here in Hampton and being able to continue his career here. And she mentioned all the highlights and it was it was a nice event. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. One of the, uh, to, to go along with that, one of the things I took away from there, which I knew but never really looked at, was the number of offices that come from Hampton that go on to do bigger yeah, and yeah. better things. Yeah. Uh, from Secret Service to FBI to Marshals. Yeah. Um, that, that shows the caliber. See, of the, different, not bigger and better. Well, We're different. Very good here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, but they go on to different places, let's put it that way. Agreed. And. Uh, it, it, it's, uh, it was great to see that that's, you know, what we get from the caliber of the people that we mm -hmm. have employed. Second thing is, don't forget, I know it's Thanksgiving this week, but Christmas Parade is coming up on December 6th, and the tree lighting is on December 5th, uptown in Morelli Square, starting at uh, 6 o'clock, 6.30, okay, and uh, a lot of events next week, uh, in two weeks, so that's it. Thank you, sir. Uh, just quickly, I'd like to reiterate, that was a classy event. It was a great event. It was a lot of fun, and I felt very safe. <laughs> <laughs> and also, a citizen brought up to me that uh, on Lafayette Road, when people put their trash and their recycling out, that they're not taking it in right away, yeah. and that some people are having a difficult time, yeah. especially elderly or somebody that's disabled, getting up through the sidewalk. So, yeah. uh, you know, I would just ask businesses and individuals to get those in after they're emptied Good so point. it opens up the sidewalks thank you sir and uh, of course we've got the uh, reincarnation of mr. Welch here this <laughs> evening Reincarnation, <laughs> the bi bionic man so uh, w welcome back and thank and you any sir you thank you sir any uh, comments public comments just I think that everybody mm -hmm. knows I think by now if they've listened to the news that uh, we're expecting some um, change in color on the ground in the next day or so and uh, going along with the trash receptacles out in the road, please remove them so the snow plows do not. Yeah. <laughs> that would be a, a, a real mess if we had to move those with the snow plows. Great. Thank you. Great to be back. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it very much. Roman 2, down 2 at New Business, the 2015 draft warrant articles. Uh, we're going to make a couple of changes. We'll bring up uh, library. We'll bring up rec. We'll Good. get on some of the heavier numbers later. Um, Mr. Gerald, stand by. And I wanted to go uh, uh, through the board, uh, as we usually do, for, for people just to give their perspective um, in, in, in just a couple of minutes on the warrant article. So, Selectman Woolsey, a couple of minutes piece from each select person, please. Oh, I don't, I'd just rather go article by article, and we're just going to stop at, we'll start after the zoning article, okay. right? Thank yeah, you. I just Sir. get the little ones out of the way. Fine with that. Okay. Yeah. No, that's good. Comments? Good. Okay, great. Hey, um, we we uh, tasked um, finance to do some numbers. In uh, 2010, uh, there were 773,000 and change of warrant articles uh, that were voted in, total warrant articles with tax impact. In 2011, it was 3.2 million. 2012 was 11.3 million. 2013, uh, the total was $705,000. In 2014, it was 1.6 million. In 2011, there were two uh, bonds on a warrant article, warrant article that included numbers for recycling equipment and for the wastewater mm -hmm. treatment plan. Yeah. In the course of 2012, two bonds on warrant included numbers for the fire stations and the Church Street pump station. This evening, as we have combed through this, we received the backup materials the board did uh, midweek. Uh, when you total up the total package here, it's just under $10 million, $10 million. So you can see where we've been. We've seen what's in here tonight. The selectmen have all done their due diligence in, in um, assessing what the town needs. I don't think anyone's spoken to each other about it, and we all have our opinions on it. 
Um, I, I have mine. It's going to be trimmed back quite a bit in, in, in my calculations. And part of that tonight is um, I wanted to have Mr. Gerald take the seat here, please. And we'll do library and, and uh, rec. But specifically, um, Mr. DeMarco had mentioned uh, we've got $18 million in the piggy bank. We have additional funds in the undesignated fund balance. Currently, there's legislation that imposes a tax upon tax, uh, Hampton residents to use their own money out of that $18 million. Now, to be sure, we receive a stipend from the trust funds for $650,000 a year. Mm -hmm. However, we have $18 million sitting in there. It is already Hampton taxpayer money. It is an asset, and were we to have access to that $18 million, without that tax or that interest rate that is charged, we could use our own money, transfer it from an asset and a bank account. And Mr. DeMarco specifically addressed the security concerns with money in the stock market today. Whereas if you, whereas if you transferred that money into some of our infrastructure needs, it would be certainly an asset that, that could not be taken away or subject to risk. So Mr. Giraud is first and foremost going to discuss that warrant article, sir. Uh, yes. Uh, the real estate trust fund uh, was created pursuant to some session laws adopted over the years, uh, beginning in 1975, then amended in 1983, and then in 2003 uh, by our state legislature. And uh, the <coughs> means by which we can utilize these funds is, is governed by that session law. And so, for instance, we have the some 18 million worth of funds uh, that, based on the current version of that session law, can be borrowed and, of course, must be paid back. But nevertheless, the rate of interest on which that we would pay on those funds is uh, the prevailing bank rate charged to municipalities as determined by the trustees of the trust funds. So we would be essentially borrowing from ourselves and paying as if we were at arm's length and not our own money. And so I've been asked to look at that session law to see what change could be made so those funds could be utilized in a, in a more uh, readily available way if it made sense to do so. And so I have presented with you with a Warren article which asks the voters, will you be in favor of asking the legislature to amend the session laws, um, as I've indicated to you, to instead of saying uh, we pay interest to, um, to ourselves, that we uh, borrow these funds uh, without interest. Now, in order to actually exercise that authority once the le legislature gives it to us, we would have to go to the townspeople on any given project, just as we do on any bonding article. Uh, nevertheless, if we make this without interest, it gives us the flexibility to uh, borrow from ourselves at a, uh, of course, a, a much, favor much more favorable rate. And if it makes sense to do so in light of what we would not be spending by way of income made by the trust funds that goes into the general fund, then we'd have the flexibility to do so. Uh, so this, this article asks the, uh, ask the voters Shall we go to the legislature and ask for this authority? Thank you. Could you please read the uh, article as you've uh, written? It? Yes. Uh, this is the authorization for real estate trust fund, and the language as it currently reads, and not much of it has changed to make this change, is uh, shall the town of Hampton vote to authorize the submission to the state legislature of the following act so that the town can borrow money from its own $18 million real estate trust fund without interest thereby saving substantial borrowing costs for important capital projects authorized by the voters to be funded through such borrowing. And then it goes on to uh, change the authorization for the Real Estate Trust Fund to give us the authority to borrow uh, without interest as opposed to having a rate of interest set by the trustees of the trust funds. Thank you, sir. Selectman Wolsey. I... I am concerned that we are not focusing as much as we should on revenue. And I don't consider this revenue. This is a, an, 
a separate source that's already existing. And I'm wondering about the possibility of a cap. I don't want to see happen here what happened to the road capital reserve fund, where it got stripped down, and then what kind of position are you in? I understand the, um, the interest, revenue, and income from the trust funds is helpful to us as uh, a small portion of revenue to the town, but I, I just like to hear what everybody else has to say. I don't know whether there could be incorporated in here some kind of cap on the spending. In other words, you could borrow against half yeah. of the funds or whatever. I can see doing a couple of big projects and then everybody sitting there with the trust funds stripped. And I ju I, I'm a little, I appreciate the work that you've done, and I'm a little nervous right now, so I'd like to hear more. Let, let me just say that there is an amortization schedule in this such that the, any loans against this already, it already is in there that there's 15 years only. So it's not out as far as some of our borrowing has been. Okay. Also, that it's, I've, I've left intact what was there before, which is the total of all loans <laughs> shall not exceed 75%, 75 percent, but that could be changed too. Mm -hmm. So there is that cap. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm listening. So. so what would be the difference if <clears throat> it was done the way it's done today versus the way the state wants it done with a limited interest rate versus the way you're talking with no interest rate? This would, um, as we're borrowing from ourselves, uh, this way we have a straight comparison to make any time the voters wanted to authorize the use of these funds whereby we compare uh, the interest we don't pay to the income we lose by using these funds instead of just taking income from it and putting into the general fund, which is the way it is now. Mm -hmm. But uh, the way it is now, we borrow the money or it goes out to a bond or whatever. That's correct. Okay. So it, what, the way the state is um, doing it where they're asking for a certain amount of interest, is there a savings from the way of doing that versus doing going with to bonding? Yes, we would. And, and it actually, when a bonding article is, is put before the voters on a given project, mm -hmm. the voters could authorize the selectmen to borrow either from the trust fund or from a bank so that you could see which is more advantageous oh, okay. at a given rate, given whatever the rates are at the time. But to answer your question specifically, we would not be paying any interest on borrowing from this fund, mm -hmm. whereas with bank rates, it's whatever the given rate is at the time. Yeah, I understand that. But what I don't understand is the way that we used to always do it would be through a bond. Correct. So now, have, have we ever borrowed from the trust fund at all? No. No. Okay. So there is an advantage to, to doing just that. Mm -hmm. Yes. And there's a further greater advantage to doing it without borrowing, without having any interest. Correct. Okay. Thank you. I think, my, like, like Mary Louise said, my only worry would be using all of it for that. But if, yes. so long as we have a cap on it, which it seems there is, Mm. If it's going to save save us money, make it easier in the long run, I, I, I think it could be a good deal. Yeah, I just saw this today, and it, it, yeah. to me it sounds complicated. Mm -hmm. And there must be some IRS rules on the interest or something. There must be there must be some of the something else in there that. And, and I would like you know a, more information on this before before doing anything because I'd like to know exactly what the consequences would be and what the IRS consequences are because it is mm -hmm. a trust fund, what that is. And I'd also like to hear from the trustees of the trust on, on, on what their feelings are in this since mm -hmm. they, uh, you know, manage this money. I mean, they might be different, but I still think I would like to hear what they have to say. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Um, I, I am uh, interested in a motion, whether it's next week or whatever, um, to do this. This is, this I think is a liberalization for taxpayers and citizens of, of Hampton to use their own money without cost. Uh, we see tonight there are, are $10 million of, of uh, needs uh, of varying degree for the town of Hampton. Uh, we see a, a demand and a, uh, 
uh, a focused attention to keep our tax rate flat. Uh, we see Exeter Road crumbling. We've got two new fire stations. We've got two collective bargaining agreements. Uh, I say that with our undesignated fund balance, with our $18 million, we have some capital in the bank that we can use and pay back to ourselves. I'd like to schedule us for the next meeting. Uh, we can get with finance to address your questions, and uh, uh, we can have Mr. Silberdick on board. And then if someone on the board uh, is prone to make a motion to go ahead with Mr. Gerald's work, uh, I would support that and support that vote. Yes, ma'am. Hey, I have one quick thought as you gentlemen are speaking. First of all, I would not like to see this used for anything other than bonded indebtedness. I wouldn't like to see this used for collective bargaining agreements or your, uh, you know, truck or whatever. I, I would consider this, if we go with it, strictly for what we would normally bond out for 20 years. That means we'd save five years worth of interest on a bond, but we're going to be compacting our payback time. We'll be losing five years off a 20-year bond payback time. So I still want to do some thinking on it, but it has possibilities, but I think we need to be really careful about stipulating <coughs> the, the um, limited area of that, uh, borrowing. That, that actually is retained. The language that's retained the way it has been is that the principle of the trust fund may be used to finance capital improvements capital of the improvements town only. when authorized in accordance th with the procedures under RSA 33, 33 colon 8, 8 yeah. which is precisely what you're talking yeah, about. Because I'm in the same position as Jim. I haven't really read this till today. Sure. So I do need to think about it, but it's, I'm, I'm happy to consider it. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Now, did you have one other issue that you wanted to discuss? Um, yes, now? just uh, the trustees of the trust funds um, have long been authorized to charge expenses for professional banking or brokerage assistance against the funds that they are administering. An exception to that, which is a hole in the RSAs, was when it came to capital reserve funds. The capital reserve funds are managed by the trustees not only for town capital reserve funds, but also for each of the school districts as well as for the Hampton Beach Village District. This new legislation, which went into effect July 26, 2014, essentially fills the hole to enable those funds to be assessed the same type of uh, brokerage fee that is charged to all other types of funds that the trustees administer. Now, what, what do you comment about what Mr. Silberdick about the doubling of the uh, pay to that, what Mr. Uh, DeMarco. DeMarco commented uh, on. What I'd like to say to you about that is the board uh, some time ago has charged me to evaluate um, the practice of the trustees, and that's still an ongoing project, and I think Mr. Silverdick will report to you about that in future. Okay. That's a work in progress and has not been finally decided. So it's something that you'll keep us informed about. Absolutely. Good. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, questions for Mark on this specific no, matter? fine. Rusty? Jim? I'm sad on this one. Okay. You good? Okay. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate it. We're going to jump to uh, Article 19, Improvements to Lane Memorial Library. Good evening, Amanda. Good evening, Amanda. I haven't really prepared any comments. I gave you all the background that I could on the two improvements we're trying to um, achieve next year. Some is continuation of bringing the HVAC equipment up to date, mm -hmm. and another is more, um, while it's sorely needed, it is more aesthetic change to the carpeting upstairs. Thank you. You're welcome. The board does have your information. Select and Rosie, questions, please. I have no problem with the article as written, and I'd be happy to vote to put it on the warrant. A motion by Wolsey. Comment, Selectman Griffin. I agree. Second. Second. Any comment? All those in favor? Unanimous. Good evening. Thank you so Happy much. Happy evening, Amanda. Happy evening. <laughs> and we were talking about the Recreation Department. And is that Article 18? <laughs> yes. yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you. <clears throat> Director? Good evening. Hi, Diana. <clears throat> I only have one article also um, that does have a few things in it. I'm asking for $148,326 for um, 
reconstructing the Tuckfield Access Road. I think it's called Meeting House Green, right between Tuckfield and the Historical Society. Mm -hmm. um, that's $23,036. To purchase a scarifier for the Parks Department, which is a piece of equipment that um, it will plow in front of the machine to fill low spots and move dirt and fill mix. It also has a part in the middle of the machine that's designed to break up and soften the top layer of surface on base pass and infill, which increases the level of safety for the players. And it has an infill rake that smooths and levels the infill for game ready action. It also can be used in the outfields, which we have a lot of that at Tuck Field. Um, basically, it acts as a thatcher. And in Tuck Field right now, we have a lot of. Um, weeds because the grass isn't able to grow because there's so much use on the fields mm -hmm. so this will help to oxygenate the, the fields so it's a it's a much needed piece of equipment we're also hoping to purchase a new bus because our bus is 10 years old and it's starting to fail on us um, we want to re-roof the tuck building we also want to replace the siding because it's had a lot of damage to it from balls and stuff coming through and the garage doors on the tuck building also, they're commercial doors, and we've had a locksmith come look at them, and he can't do anything about it. We have to actually replace the doors because half the instructors can't get in. I can't, my key doesn't work on it anymore. We can't get into the building, so we want to replace those doors. Um, that's $4,000 approximately. And also I put in some for some new pieces that are, uh, I'll call them failing pieces of equipment at Kids Kingdom. Mm -hmm. So all of that um, I've wrapped into one fund, and that also comes out of the recreation fund, so there's no tax impact. Thank you. Mr. Select Chairman, I'll be happy to move this to the warrant. And this has no tax rate impact because this is the authorization to withdraw from existing funds right. that are already in the control of the recreation department. Second. Second. Griffin, any more discussion? I just want to, Diane, can you, can you explain to us what the bus is used for? I think, I think that's important. Everything. <laughs> well, I, I, I know what it's used for, but I think it's important um, that the, the people out there understand how much that's used, because I know it's used. It is used a lot. The, um, the major thing we use the bus for is for senior citizen trips, but we also um, use it for, say, the tour of lights at Christmas. For um, some of the summer camps, we transport kids back and forth with that, with the bus. Um, the other town employee other departments have used it for different events that they have where they've needed to go places in one vehicle um, but again I think that I would say the major use is for the senior citizens and that goes out a couple times a week anyways well usually at least once yeah if not every other week but some weeks it does go out two or three times some weeks it goes out every day different things all right thank you thank you thank you all those in favor but Oh. I'm pub, Mr. Riddell. I am so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Skip right over me. Uh -uh. <laughs> no, I'm just wondering, being 10 years old, does it have a problem with any safety issues or anything? I mean, the, those start coming up. Right the second, it, it doesn't because it was just in the shop, but it did leave some seniors at a, up in Maine one time. Renee, and Renee, I have to give Renee huge kudos. I'm glad I was not the trip leader for that. He called a local bus company to see if he could get them to come look at it and was able to get get us squared away and get all the people back on the trip. So right now it's in working condition, but it desperately needs to be replaced. Okay. And in the future, do you see any other big big costs coming? I mean, using money out of your, your fund there, do you see any of the big costs coming up? or? Um, big like that cost? Yeah. The only other thing that I can think of off the top of my head right now is that Kids Kingdom Playground. Uh, there's other pieces of equipment that should be replaced or yeah. I mean the thing is um, it's 20 years old now so yeah, well it's time to, yeah. yeah and yeah, it's, well used, right. it's very well used okay I'm set thank you are you all set mr. Waddell thank, thank you for your comments mr. Waddell all those in favor unanimous thank all you right. director and Mary Louise I wanted to tell you quickly that the lights are up at Eaton Park <laughs> two things left to do we got to cut down a couple cut one tree and re and trim a little trim another one and um, that was supposed to be done today but it rained so I'll go by and then my yep we also need to get um, squared away with how to program it and other than that it's done great they look good thank you so much for yep. your efforts on that all right thank you Chief Sawyer Deputy Hobbs Article 22 Article 23 please.
Good evening. Good evening. Chief. Uh, I think the first one we'll go over is the asset forfeiture account. I think that's a, a pretty easy one to understand. It's uh, through our investigations from time to time, we were able to um, seize property and funds from people involved in activities such as drug dealing in our community, or if those investigations take us out of town, uh, we're often partnered up with our state and federal uh, partners. And a lot of times there's, there's assets that are seized and through court proceedings are divvied up amongst the agencies. Uh, what we're seeking is for this uh, to give us permission that when we have those funds to expend them in part of it during the course of our investigations. Uh, but it's a year-to-year -year warrant article that needs to be approved by the voters. Yeah. Also move that we uh, place the forfeiture fund on the warrant. A second. Rosie Bridal. Uh, questions? Discussion? All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Sir. The uh, second article is the article we're seeking to fund our summertime special officers academy. Uh, just to give you an idea what that is, is uh, our, routine, our normal recruiting process starts almost as the summer ends. We, we're about two weeks and we run a test right after the Seafood Festival. Uh, as we speak, we're in the process with 10 candidates for part-time positions with the department for next summer. Uh, it's a very encompassing process. It starts with a uh, written test, physical uh, agility testing, oral board, and then on through the conditional office of employment for uh, psychological background and polygraph. We started out with approximately 85 folks that uh, signed up to take our test. We are down to 10. Uh, recruitment is very difficult. The, the standards are very stringent, and the academy is very difficult. It's a 200-hour part-time academy. Uh, we do host that at Hampton PD on Tuesday and Thursday nights, and some weekends they have to go up to Concord for the driving and the firearms portion. Um, we're finding that our numbers are difficult to maintain. Uh, you remember a couple years ago, we did run a special academy during the summer of 2013. Those folks did not work during 2013 as police officers, but they attended training in a very shortened, abbreviated session. We compacted the 200 hours uh, into the summer session to really target a demographic we weren't hitting. We really went after some of the college students and the teachers, uh, and we had some success with that. Um, we were not able to do that last year due to the default budget. It was something that we had to cut out. So we do seek to put that outside of the budget uh, on a warrant article this year because we are definitely in need of the officers. So I'll just give you a quick rundown of where we are at today. Currently, we have 31 officers on our part-time roster. Now, and again, as I mentioned, we have 10 in process. Of the 31 on the process, uh, currently on the roster, we have six with over 30 years' experience, four with 20 years' experience. Um, and every year, we experience the number of people that leave as, as they move on in life to other things, other endeavors. So that's a pretty experienced group, and you don't know how many summers you're going to get out of them at that point. And then going back to 2010, um, I ran the numbers of the number of hires we've had and, and who we have retained. Since 2010, we have hired 46 special officers. We only retained 12 of them in part-time positions as we speak, although we were fortunate enough to get eight of them into our full-time ranks. But just keep in mind that every time we take an officer full-time, we always draw from our part-time ranks. It's a negative against those ranks. So going forward with 31 officers ten, you know, in process, I can expect to lose two or three of those that are in process now in looking at the roster, knowing where people are in their lives and their careers, I expect to lose three or four of those folks. So we're going to be back to some low numbers again. Um, last summer, we worked with 105 shifts. Back 2000 to 2009, we were working with 124 shifts. And it's just always a, a juggling act trying to manage um, the needs of the department, especially if we have one of those warm summers like we did in 2012, making sure we have sufficient number of officers out there to cover the needs. So we would ask for uh, the selectman's endorsement on that warrant article. Selectman Wilson. I support what you're doing. I'm sorry to always to hear that it's such a such a hard <laughs> process. Not we want the the really strict training, but so hard for you to get the officers and then they leave. This should be in the budget. I would be prepared to move 
to put this funding in the budget at the deliberative session, it really annoys me to say see special money articles for something as critical to the police department as the training. Slick and Griffin. I am very supportive of your article here. Thank you. Thank you. Slickman Bridal. I think however however we fund it, it needs to be done. Oh yeah. You guys have uh, uh I mean, you, you've struggled for a number of years trying to get your numbers up there, and, and it, it's a difficult task. One of the questions I had is, is this exclusively for part-time Hampton guys, or are there other departments that could possibly come into this? And The money that we are seeking only funds the uh, Hampton officers. We are a remote site for the New Hampshire Police Stands and Training Council, which means uh, when they run their part-time academy, there will be an instructor up in Concord at the Academy, and there are a couple of other sites, I believe Keene and Littleton are the other two uh, satellite sites. Mm -hmm. So our training room is wired with the cameras, so you'll have an instructor up on one screen, and if somebody has a question up in Keene, there's a proctor at each one of the sites. Uh, I remember Tim Crotz, our retired captain, is one of the proctors for the Hampton site. So if we have a question in Hampton, they have a similar microphone set up that we have here, uh, and the uh, officer or the candidate that has a question from Hampton can ask the question to the instructor in Concord and actually be interactive. So it, it's, it saves us some some travel time uh, and it makes it more accessible. So we are open to other seacoast uh, towns for these for okay. seats in the room, but we right. don't we don't pay for those. Right. Correct. I, I understood yep. that, but I was just wondering if if the other towns were made available for the same thing. Yeah, we usually see the most we see is from the uh, Marine Patrol. The Marine Patrol and Hampton PD are the two largest. Uh, employers of special officers in the state and uh, we usually fill up the room mm. with people from those two agencies very good mr Waddell. yeah so so this is going to be run in hand <clears throat> most of it most um of it. there are there are portions where where they do the driving you have to go up to the police academy the driving pad is out behind the um the academy and fortunately we utilize their cars because if you ever saw how we drive at the driving school you wouldn't want us to use our cars. <laughs> if I can add to that, there's, these numbers include two separate parts. There's the 200 hours of the state academy and the 100 hours in-house. So the first half they'll be the state, which is they run it but use our facility and then there's a second 100 hours after that's completed where we do that totally in-house. And without this, what happens? <laughs> well, as I said, this year is kind of a good good look at it. We're we're going to move forward with the ten we have right now, but I suspect that number by the time we get to the fourth of July will be down to seven. So we'll be we could possibly be under thirty working part time officers if the trends that we've seen over the years continues. By the time we get past the fourth of July, because we historically lose a bunch of people right after that, because yeah. you got to keep in mind, um, as Rusty pointed out. We uh, have a great reputation um, with the training we give our officers, and there are, we're in a time period right now in this country where there's a critical need for trained police officers, and it's very expensive to run processes. When people look at somebody that walks in from the town of Hampton, they know we've put them through everything that everybody else puts a full-time officer through because we use our officers, you know, lockstep with the full-time guys. You can't tell the difference. We wear the same uniform. They're riding horses. They're riding motorcycles. We use them like nobody else does. Um, they work a regular schedule for the 12-week summer. So when they when they walk out of Hampton PD and they go to Nashua, Nashua, and I think I've mentioned it here before, Nashua loves the town of Hampton because oh, yeah. they have probably 15 to 18 of our folks mm -hmm. that started here um, just because we offer great training because of, of the environment we have to work in. What's that? I, I Thank you. We are looking for Article 22A. Mr. Chairman, I have one quick quick question. Select the officers Wolsey. being paid now, and I literally don't remember, are the special officer candidates being paid to attend? What we did because of the summer class being much yeah. more, many more hours per week to yeah. work, we did pay them. Good. What we would be moving forward, I believe, is a stipend. Instead of paying them on a weekly basis, Okay. Once they complete a level of training, okay. they would be, like we did back in the, the olden days when I came on, oh, yeah. there was a stipend paid at the end of your training cycle. Okay, because it's not fair, I think, to expect people to go through that and not be compensated in I, some fashion. I agree with you completely, yeah. but sometimes that's beyond our control, but I agree with your, yeah. your sentiment. Yeah. <clears throat> I'll make a motion. We have a motion by Selectman Bridal. I'll second. A second by Waddell. All those in favor? I'll That's vote in favor, but I want to see this in the budget. That is a unanimous vote. Thank you. On the 
animal control vehicle. Is that your purview? Are you yes. prepared to speak to that? Mm -hmm. I think I, uh, I the, the assistant town manager is going to help me with that one because he put that one together before he left. <laughs> so uh, the animal control vehicle, uh, long and short of it, is uh, B and it needs replacement. It is a pickup truck that we've used multiple duties, not only for animal control work, but in plowing as well. Uh, mm -hmm. The total number is 37,000 is what we'll be seeking uh, in the Warren article this year. And I'll so move. Thank you. Second. Discussion? Favor? Unanimous. Gentlemen, thank you. Thank you for the Tough night, Chief. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Who was the second on the animal control? Thank you. I'd like to bring up the fire department, please, and then we're going to go to the grist mill, then we're going to go to public works. Sure. Please. Okay. Gentlemen. Good evening. Thank you for letting me speak tonight. I'd like to uh, welcome Captain Bill Kennedy, who's up here to assist this evening. Skipper, and good evening. By his ringtone, you can see he's a huge Aerosmith fan. Thank you. <laughs> He's pretty bashful, though. I don't know if you should have brought him. <laughs> Article 12, purchase the fire engine. Purchase the fire engine, yes, sir. Uh, we're here seeking $615,000 for the purchase of a new fire engine pumper. The new fire engine pumper will meet all current safety guidelines dictated by NFPA 1901, and it will be designed to maintain the readiness of Hampton Fire Rescue for years to come. It will replace a 1988 Emergency One pumper, Hampton Fire Rescue Engine 4. Uh, the pumper was manufactured in 1987 and purchased for $156,777.16 and delivered in 1988. Then Fire Chief uh, Anthony Cunjo had this engine specked out for use as an attack pumper. It was used as a frontline pump for 14 years. Fire engines are recommended to be frontline for 10 years and then placed in reserve for 10 years. Engine 4 was placed in reserve in 2002 when Engine 2, a smeal pumper, was purchased. The new fire engine pump will be placed frontline. This will place Engine 2 in reserve. Engine 2 is 12 years old, two years beyond the recommended length of service as a frontline piece. Engine 4 is often brought to the frontline status when our other engines are in for maintenance or repair. Historically, Engine 4 has responded to many of the largest fires in Hampton's recent memory. Um, we have the Oddfellows Building, the Beacon Hotel, the Old Salt Restaurant Fire, 707 Ocean Boulevard, 7 F Street, uh, Hampton Marina, Epping and Dover Street fires, and the A Block Fire. She served as Sentinel for the last 26 years, making her the third oldest piece of firefighting <coughs> equipment at Hampton Fire Rescue. The only pieces with more seniority are Captain Kennedy and Captain Stevens. So. <laughs> <laughs> and there's more miles on each of those. <laughs> <laughs> to inject a little humor, uh, what do a Model T Ford, a 57 Chevy, a 66 Corvette, and Engine 4 all have in common? According to the State of New Hampshire Registry of Motor Vehicles, they all qualify for antique plates. Oh, yeah, right. A quick review of records indicates that we have spent $67,824.92 over the last eight years in maintenance and repair of this vehicle. Maintaining the pump's rated capacity has cost us over $11,000 since 2012. Mm. We have been put on notice that mechanically the power plant needs to be rebuilt or replaced. This estimated cost ranges from $15,000 to $30,000. The replacement of Engine 4 has been on the capital improvement plan for the Hampton Fire Rescue as far back as 2005. <laughs> The estimated cost of the proposed replacement then ranged from 486000 to 500000 In 2011, the estimated cost had jumped to $575,000. Our requested Warren article figure is the result of a projected design, manufacture, and delivery um, of a fire engine pumper spec'd out last year, plus a 3% increase that has occurred over the last 12 months. The new fire engine pump will be manufactured with several I'm sorry, the, will be manufactured with several safety features that are designed to keep the firefighter safer. Modern restraint devices, proper ground lighting, and properly designed equipment storage compartments. Mm -hmm. Currently, much of the gear that is used on a day-to-day -day basis resides in the cab of the vehicle with the firefighters and officers that are riding in it. It could become a projectile if it's yeah. involved in a car accident. This vehicle design will place an emphasis on safety <coughs> as we described, and it will also be designed with an eye towards serviceability. One of the great achievements in recent years has been the preventative maintenance schedule that the vehicles are currently on. Captain Kennedy has been the officer in charge of this particular collateral duty and has brought this fleet from disrepair into a state of readiness we enjoy today. We do a very good job of taking care of our equipment. We fully expect that this fire engine pumper will provide for the safety of the residents, visitors, and the property of the town of Hampton for the next 20 years. Thank you. Only Second thank you. Rosen. Mr. Chairman, I will be happy to move this. I have a couple of uh, stipulations that I want to point out, if I may. <clears throat> God knows this is long overdue. 
What's the 88, what brand, what make is the 88 pumper, guys? E1. E1. No, what brand? What <coughs> brand? Emergency one. Emergency one. That's it. That's a brand. Oh, okay. All right. I just, now, I would like to see at the top, instead of purchase fire engine, I want to see purchase fire engine slash pumper. I want the public to, to hit the public's eye right away that we are talking about one of the pumpers. Do you have an idea on the new brand that you're looking for, or have you focused on a... Uh, based on the price yeah. and uh, and what we're looking at, we'll have to do an RFP, mm -hmm. uh, and we'll we'll get it back. We do have a design in mind. Okay. We have certainly the needs that we've um, that okay. we've indicated. But not ready to identify right. a potential love brand. At long overdue, and we have got to get the pumper. Select me, Griffin. No, thank you. Thank you. Couldn't agree with Mary Louise more. I I ran that truck when it was new, and I ran it when it. Ah, wasn't so new. Wasn't so new, <laughs> and it's lasted this town very well. It's been a good old girl. She's time to go. Yeah. So, it's like we're done. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm in agreement. I mean, how many of the fire departments have an antique that they're running on a <laughs> daily basis? <laughs> that, that's a that's a good question. Um, you know, without without checking it out, I'd have to I'd have to say that there's still some out there, I but know. not many that are at the volume that we're at, right. especially with the the runs that we're seeing. We're seeing close to four thousand calls a year, and that truck is doing first line duty very often. And you can fit it in the fire station. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. The new fire station helps. One uh, point, uh, the most recent draft incorporates your pumper issue in there as yeah, well. Yeah, so I, I think I want that to center. jump out at the yep, public. It's there now. Yeah, thank you, sir. Thank you. We have a motion. We have a second. All those in favor? Unanimous. One. Thank you. We're talking a uh, traffic control for Beach Fire Station. That's true. Thank Article you, 28, sir. Okay. We are uh, requesting $25,000 for the purchase and installation of traffic <coughs> control devices on Ashworth Ave and Brown Avenue. These devices are used to stop traffic at strategic points and allow for emergency vehicles the opportunity to enter the roadway and respond to emergencies. These devices make travel safer in and around intersections. The cost is based on purchase and installation of new equipment. The uh, original lights that were there were taken down during building construction and they were never replaced. Thank you. Selectman Wolsey. I have a question, uh, Fred and Jamie. We have any money, do you think, at the end of the year to do this? I really object to having, we've got to do it, and I appreciate that. I don't think there's any money left from fire there isn't uh, the building fund. construction. There isn't. But it, is there a possibility we could fund this at the end of the year? I hate seeing this in special money articles for $25,000. We've got to do it. I would say that, that um, can we squeeze? We, what we can do is put it on the priority list. However, uh, we have warned all the department heads, as we indicated to you with Christie's presentation last week, that mm -hmm. we're running pretty, pretty, mm -hmm. pretty tight. It's tight. There are some other you know, needs that are there that need to be addressed, yeah. but we can address it. I would suggest we leave it here, and if we can pull it, we do. Okay. Select and reasonable. I agree. Select and bridle. It, it, it's needed. Um, you know, in the in the fire department, every second counts. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And to respond northbound on Ocean Boulevard there, yeah. if they have to come out of Brown Ave, take a right, and then go up G Street on a Sunday day, you're fighting traffic that whole way. <clears throat> by by the use of this light, it stops the traffic at D Street, so it allows them to come out Brown Ave mm -hmm. and go up D Street, yeah. possibly saving them minutes, and lives are saved in minutes. Yeah. So I wholeheartedly agree, and I'll make a motion to to accept this warrant article. As I'll second. Uh, which is standby. What? Selectman Waddell has not weighed what? in. I just don't like me. I don't know what's going on, Jim. <laughs> 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 no, it's just a bad night. No, I agree 100% uh, with, with this. It's not a law that you have to have on it. Uh, no, I don't believe that it is. I think currently what we're seeing right now is uh, we're replacing something that we've had for years, yeah. and we're we're finding through the especially through summer traffic that it's clearly indicated. Oh yeah, you know yeah. certainly. It's, again, the positioning of this gym is so that they can go against traffic. Yeah. The law would require yeah. it doesn't require it, but you have to have it to stop the traffic to them to move against traffic. Yeah. Right. Otherwise, yeah. they have to follow the flow. Okay. which will increase the length okay, of the Okay, then that is, yeah. I'm All right. Seconding and, Rusty with the stipulation that if we can find the money at the end of the year and the budget to pull it. Yeah. Thank you for approval of the Article 28. We have 
Bridal, Wolsey, all those in favor, unanimous. Thank you. Gentlemen, thank, thank you. you. Good, Good night. night. Good night, Skipper. Is this a requirement for the fire department? It is. It's getting there. It is, huh? All right. <laughs> We'd like to also recognize uh, Selectman Bridal again. Thank you, sir. Nice job. The yeah, full man chose the. <laughs> That's all the rage well, now. This is November. There so. at, the, at the open house. Hi, man. I'm figuring that I should. Article 40, <laughs> Mill Pond Dam <laughs> petition. Please. Chief Hurley. I'll just wait a second here now. <clears throat> I, Mr. Chairman, you will stipulate that this is a private petition and will be on the warrant. I just did. Oh, I didn't hear you very well. Okay. Well, we're requesting, obviously, the Mill Pond Dam uh, warrant article with a request to have the Mill Pond repaired instead of decommissioned. Decommissioned means basically cutting a hole in the Mill Pond Dam. We believe that uh, on a number of issues, uh, we believe it's a better option. I believe the options, and I know that address a few things. I believe it's an option that if it had been on last year's warrant, may have had the chance, just like the other warrant did, to pass, and at least we are given the, the voters an option to vote one or the other. What this does now is it still gives the voters an option to vote. Either no is leaving it as it is, as last year's vote, and yes is to repair the dam. Um, and we believe there's a number of issues why we believe it should be repaired. It will have a gross effect on the, the looks of the dam and the mill pond. It will remove, um, according to the Stevens report, it will remove a good portion of the raceway that goes under the building now, and it will show, it will, it will run that all the way out to beyond where the dam is now. And in normal times, it will be just a trickle of water. But more importantly, um, it will, if you remove it in major storms, it will be almost a 50% increase of water flow that may infect the, exist, the existing um, dam, um, excuse me, the existing uh, uh, foundation of the building that's there. So it could grossly affect the building and the integrity of the building. Secondly, it increases, if you repair it, it increases substantially the flood controls, which you'll have absolutely none if you remove. You remove the, the dam, you'll have absolutely no flood controls. You, re you repair the dam, you'll have substantial flood controls. And approximately 20% more of what you have now, or 70% more if you remove it from what if you remove it. And I believe that and alone uh, could save this town substantial money. With a 50% increase of major flooding in a major storm, you have the potential of wa washing out, overtopping, and washing out a high street. The other thing it would also do for us is it would actually could potentially grossly reduce the cost of replacing the, the culverts under High Street, which has been a project that was imparted with this whole project to begin with. Because dropping it 20% over what is existing now or 70% or over decommissioning, you will not need to put as large a culverts in to redo the roads. Under, and the road is big underneath where it is now. You could substantially reduce that cost. So the cost factors, and again, the cost on this Warren article is an additional $250,000, including the money, plus including the money of last year decommissioning for, for a total of $650,000. And we're not trying to hide anything what it is. We're trying, to, we're trying to do everything we can to answer all the questions. We've been to several meetings with different groups. We also believe there's potential of, quite honestly, further increasing or helping protect the aquifer, which was a big issue that was brought up the other night at the planning board meeting. Um, because, quite honestly, it is a, a big part of the aquifer for the town of uh, Hampton, and it is what, we're, you know, the aquifer protection zone is almost substantially, the whole area is mostly in the aquifer protection zone. Secondly, it is also a major drainage for almost uh, all the regional uh, areas and uh, housing developments and neighborhoods in that area, allowing the water to come through. It helps with sediment control, it helps with erosion control, it helps with uh, reducing flood control, or it helps increase flood control if we repair this dam. So we're, I know it's, uh, and, and again, hearing the numbers tonight, which are, to me are a bit astounding, um, I know it's a cost, but I believe in the long run, it's a cost that the town would do far better served by repairing than replacing, uh, than, than removing. Because I believe just the potential of saving High Street, which I believe also is one of your emergency response plans 
evacuation routes. It's also a, you know, a major route for both police and fire that it really should be watched and, and protected. So we are asking that you consider this warrant article as, as um, presented. Thank you. Selectman Wilson. Uh, this is a private petition <coughs> article, so we're not going to vote. Do you have questions? On the article. I do have uh, a couple of questions. The public voted in 2014 the funding to decommission the dam. I don't remember the article number. Uh, what? Uh, article, article 15. 15. 15, thank you. Right, right on the ball. Um, why has that not been done? Are we in the habit of sitting here asking the public to vote on Warren articles and then ignoring them? Well, you've been a selectman for both those years. Can yes, you answer your own question? That's, and I voted to get that on the warrant. And, okay. I, and it was on the warrant, and it was passed on the warrant. Okay. And I want to know why the uh, action that the voters directed us to do has not taken place. I will, I will, I will say this, that last year is, is your chair. Um, these folks, and they have done magnificent, mm -hmm. magnanimous yep. work and research on a vital asset to the community, both ecologically, economically, in terms of real estate values, they were promised a public hearing. Mm -hmm. And they never received that hearing. And there's quite a bit of tax base down there. It's ecologically important. It's important with our public works program. It's an important test with the state of New Hampshire mm -hmm. that they dictate to us what we do in this town but don't fund anything. And we provided the opportunity for these fine citizens mm -hmm. to come in here. This is Plan B. And I've been very satisfied with their performance, their presentation tonight, and I hope that answers your question. I want to just <coughs> continue with a couple of uh, observations. Uh, to remove the 400,000 voted in 2014, oh, it does say Article 15 here, and place in the town's general fund. So we are, we are automatically going to do that if this passes, have, has a special money article, the authority, to dictate that outcome for the funds from this year. Once you repeal a warrant article that's been approved by the town meeting with an appropriation, the money has to go back to the general right. fund. Right. But this, this would, in effect, repeal that. It would be nothing that we would do. That's correct. It, it would, by virtue of but By virtue a, of the vote, it would vote, cancel that appropriation. Would. Okay. So the, our funding for the article would be 400000 from the town's fund balance. So that's assuming that the, that the 400000 would be intact and there would be sufficient of a fund balance. I just want to... This is money. I just want to understand what we're doing here. The floor is yours. There's no, no So, rush. So uh, one would have to assume that the $400,000 come March, having been surrendered because of a superimposed warrant article, that that would be intact in our finance stream. So the gist of this article is to raise $250,000 from new taxation. Has this um, site been declared a, a National Historic Site yet? I, I think to, it's to not. To my knowledge, yeah. it, um, the national part of it, it has not been. Uh, uh, um, I believe the last that I heard that the town needed to have the town manager sign an application request in order to get it on and yeah. I was told that the town manager had not signed the application to be considered. Considered, and it has to go through consideration before it can go next step. So, because um, I think there was some discussion about section federal, 106. federal constraints it, regarding this area, but that would not be applicable, I would assume, unless uh, unless and until this particular area was designated by the federal government as an historic site. I don't know the full answer. I, I actually met with the Army Corps of Engineers specifically right. to ask that question um, right. last week, mm -hmm. and I'm not sure of the full answer because what we got from we went we also met with the state uh, board of uh, right. uh, DES, um, yeah, D no DHR, oh. D the Department of Historic. Uh, um, okay. Okay. Uh, the state. The state said yes. The Army Corps said well, it, it, not so quick. Mm -hmm. um, they said that because the because the application had not been put in, mm -hmm. it may not be. "Quote unquote nationally recognized uh, as right. as eligible for the for the national." For, um, the state is telling me that the section 106 and both the the Department of Environmental Services and the the Department of Historic Register of the state of New Hampshire told me that the section 106 would have to be met. 
the federal government says unless it's been applied for to be on the National Register, we don't necessarily consider it unless it's been applied to that point. So I, I, oh, I can, I, I'm lost. We, we've been asking the question, trying to get a straight answer like you were. Seriously. Well, I can appreciate your frustration. But what I'm trying to understand here is that we have a directive, I understand, and the Public Works uh, Director is here, that we have been ordered by the state of New Hampshire to either rebuild the dam or decommission it. The Warren Article 15 that was passed this year at the March town meeting uh, gave authority to the town to proceed with decommissioning. Um, is there something that I'm missing here? Does the state order still stand? The state order stands, but my understanding is the state is on hold until such time as the town votes on the petition. Okay, okay. Because I just want clarification so I understand the where The order is there, but because the petition has been presented, the state basically has said we will wait for the town to vote to see whether or not okay. they have changed their mind, in which case we'll go back and revisit. Okay. And in this particular instance, then, there's no um, overriding interest as far as National Historic Registry is concerned. We're just dealing now with the state of New Hampshire and the town of Hampton. Is it, that fair? It is not registered in the national site as far as I know. Right. No one has presented a petition to the town to register it. Right. No one's requested that. Uh, I've seen no paperwork on it. Right. Uh, the Army Corps has not been in contact with us. Okay. I just I appreciate the chance to clarify. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Selectman Wolsey. I know we're not voting on this, and please feel free, as I will, to uh, uh, render your opinion whether um, you would suggest this or recommend this to the voters mm -hmm. or not. Sir. Yeah. Um, I, as I've heard about this as it's gone through, many years of conversation, the state is not in any hurry to either force us to no. uh, dismantle or rebuild. Um, <clears throat> and I admire your persistence. Thank you. I think last year, um, as was stated, that uh, the neighbors asked for a hearing and were not given that uh, public hearing. That's correct. And <clears throat> So for that reason, I think all the more reason why we, we should let this Warren article go through. Well, we have to let it go. I would think it would be a damn shame if we didn't. We have to let it go through. It's a private Absolutely. article. Yeah. Uh, Select Mordell. I agree with Rusty, and, and I think, you know, the, the, the reason, I mean, and I think it has to be clarified to people purely, clearly that there was a Warren article voted on, but the public meeting never took place, and therefore that's why the Selectmen mm -hmm. chose to go, you know, to open it up for you guys to do that. I think that's that's very important, um, and I just think it's important to uh, get out there and uh, you got to do a lot of education and you got to convince people <laughs> who voted last year and think that that vote should stand that uh, it should be different. So, right. and I know you guys have done a good job <laughs> of doing that education. And I know you've been out there working, but I think that's true. Okay, yeah. You're telling them to work harder. Harder, man. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you, and uh, Chief, I would just say that uh, the conduct of your group and the research and the time and the effort uh, that you put into this and that your polite insistence to have the public hearing that, that uh, you were promised uh, is, is noteworthy, just as this project is. And, and I enthusiastically support uh, Article 40 uh, and the petitioned uh, article for the Mill Pond Dam, and good luck on it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Department of Public Works. Please. Uh, ding, 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 ding. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Alarm bells. Perhaps they could wash something else, but you know. Good evening. Um, Good evening. Good evening. And, and let me just say, I think we're just going to start going right down the list. We'll start with 11 numerically. Actually, I was going to Seven. suggest or request that Seven. we could do 13 first and do uh, so Chris can. He's going to present that one, and then he can head home, and then I'll stay for the others and actually do Exeter Road last. Okay. Do um, you have dinner waiting? No, I have. Uh, <laughs> I don't need any you personal response. You got to go. You got to. Not feeling all right. Medical right. issues. Okay. All right. Enough said. Um, go ahead. So go ahead. Go, however okay. you want. Which number? Thirteen. Thirteen. Thank you. Is there one got? Um, it's basically for the public's. Edification, um, the articles to raise an appropriate sum of 382000 for the purchase and replacement of a 2,000 ton utility truck body with a snow plow uh, attached. Uh, 
one of our two thousand to replace the two thousand one one tump ton dump truck and snow plow and to replace our two of our uh, oldest six wheel dump trucks uh, with plow and wings those are our biggest uh, dump trucks in our fleet um, reasons for uh, replacing those four specific pieces of equipment uh, unit 24 which is the three-quarter ton utility truck is used uh, on a daily basis every day of the week uh, by the sewer and drain division it is the truck that it's equipped to respond to emergency calls it handles all the inspections um, it handles all of the um, dig safe requests for uh, replacement or, uh, when they're looking to replace things within the ground um, our biggest issue with that truck is well one is rust but secondly we had to make the uncomfortable decision this past summer whether to uh, replace the transmission or not um, because it is one of our lead uh, vehicles in that particular division it's, it is the most important vehicle in that division we did replace the transmission so it's reached that point where the the maintenance costs are going to continue to accelerate on this vehicle so it was the time to um, replace it um, unit 36 the one ton dump truck uh, it's 15 years old there again it's on the side where uh, the the cost to maintain these vehicles is going up significantly um, estimated replacement cost of that vehicle is 49,000 we use these to um, with the number of streets we can't fit the full six wheel dump truck down with plow and wing uh, I'm talking the beach streets the Eskers the Vikings Robin lanes mm -hmm. things of that yeah. nature uh, it's these one ton dump trucks are the uh, the workhorse if you will um, I wish I had more of them um, we can also put a lot of uh, gravel in the back for road patching um, paving repairs things of that nature we do use them a lot for uh, tree removal uh, leaf collection things of that <coughs> nature the other two vehicles that we're looking to replace are the uh, 1988 Mac uh, six-wheel dump truck um, estimated cost to replace 146,000 um, bring you back to what the fire chief said this truck is equal to mm -hmm. his cost <laughs> I took his replacement cost where he's estimating somewhere around 625,000 if he projects that out over his 20 year he's looking at a $31,000 per year for his vehicle to to, um, to uh, yeah if you will replace the fight fires I, we keep very good track of have for the last year um, our cost or operating cost we purchased that vehicle for 78,000 we've dumped not dumped spent, spent if you will and uh, over fifteen thousand dollars to keep it on in operating uh, this year we've actually scraped and painted the whole box and outside body so that it didn't look that bad um, it's 27 years old you've it's cost the town only three thousand four hundred sixty two dollars a year so we get a heck of a value is my point for uh, out of these vehicles if I look at the total amount of mileage dollar uh, 38 a mile for every mile it's plowed and or been on the road I also had similar fig figures for the other one the 1996 wheel dump truck mileage 85 four thousand uh, original price was 81 733 if you include the maintenance it's all it's worked out luckily just a buck a mile on that one um, I didn't do the same adage but it would still be somewhere around three thousand dollars a year that's what these vehicles cost us so we've uh, we've used them we've taken care of them um, but they are reaching their useful life uh, the end of their useful life if the if the one tons or the two six wheelers if any of those break down during a snowstorm yes we would shift let's say a payloader with a wing on it to uh, plow those streets but what would happen is that the snow routes right now we're trying to maintain about a three-hour turnaround on snow routes 
the snow routes we would see would go quickly to five hours, mm -hmm. which when you take an inch an hour makes the roads basically impassable. If we let that happen, the, the pickup, the heavy pickup trucks we have, the three quarter tons, and even some of the one tons, then have a difficult time plowing their roots. Yeah. So we tend to literally snowball and fall further behind. So that's why these four were selected. Uh, we would be trading in these four towards those vehicles. I do have actual breakdowns or yeah, we got it. paper estimates. Yeah. Thank Question. you. Select Wolsey. Is the uh, number four a Mac as well, Chris? Number 42. number 42, yeah. Use my glasses here. <laughs> it is a Mac, yes. Yeah. Okay, and you think 24 and 36 would be replaced with Chevys, or are you open on that? We're open on that, to be honest with you. We are. Part of the purpose of doing this was to track yeah. the difference between the GMCs yeah. and the Chevys. Um, we'll, let, uh, we'll let the bid process fall and tell yeah. us. And your mileage that's listed on here is odometer miles, it's not engine miles. Correct. Okay. The only thing I list odometer miles on is things like payloaders. Right. I appreciate the fact that you need these. I still would like to see an up-to-date rolling stock list for us um, because <coughs> I'm really still concerned about those pickup trucks, guys. I really want to see us consolidating, offloading, trading in, uh, bundling, whatever the heck we have to do. Right. to start scaling down. Well, we have uh, one sitting out in the backyard. It will be traded in. I know there was talk about uh, the Unit 23. It's a 2000 Chevy. Mm. Um, about possibly taking that and putting it in the auction, but as I, I think I explained, is that, uh, we had vehicles in the auction this time go for as little yeah. as $1,000. Yet I traditionally in the past have gotten two to $2,500 out of vehicles uh, for someone who wants to use a sharp pencil and they want to earn that bid. Yeah. Uh, they've used those trade-in vehicles. So there's actually, at this point, three of them that are actually going to be traded in. 15 has a wooden bumper on it. Yeah. The shocks yeah. fell off in the past. I, I know. I'm trying the to condition. think of the other one. I've so seen them. Yeah, there's, there's, so there's three of them. So the idea, I agree with you in principle about getting... Winnow Not down. having as many pickup trucks, pickup trucks right. um, to rely on, but I would rather cycle them out where I can get the greatest return value on them and use whatever yeah. remaining life they have yeah. at the point, Just this point in time. Select but no, I would agree. <laughs> Nothing, thank you. The only question I get is, have you ever thought of putting going in a plow and a sander on the two adults? A Two of the, we have four sanders, uh, so yes, the Peterbilt have sanders on them, and yes. No, no, he's talking about, about the, the roll -off. sludge. The, oh, the, the roll-off roll trucks. I know they did it in New York City. They do it um, in Portsmouth, too. I only yeah. know because when I plowed out the peas, I used to see That's one That's pretty there. hard on a truck, whereas we have to drive it all the way to Rochester on the highway, you know, as far as lateral uh, tension on the truck and everything. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't want to do that unless it was I was just saying, if, if for a big storm, if you had right. yeah. had the ability to do it, mm -hmm. yep. and if you had a big storm, you could at least... Yeah. Call it into play if you needed it. It's right. just, just a thought. No, I, I would agree. I know, it's, I know we you have need, floated the idea before. I know you need equipment, and uh, yeah. I'm, I'm supportive of it. Select my window. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Let's hope you don't have to put these things to a test this week. I'm hoping not. Keep our fingers well, crossed. we're the latest forecast is we are somewhere, you know, two to three we in this scaled area. Scaled back, though, yeah, on the coast. More I agree. Us. And, you know, in the last five hours, <laughs> if it know. goes up to yeah. see more, we'll end they up with more. Yeah. So we don't panic, but we are prepared. Yeah. I agree that it's a lot of money, but I agree also that, you know, the trucks are used all the time and they're, they're used hard and the, and, and the sea is hard on them, the, the salt is yes. hard on them, it's not, a, it's not an easy environment. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure your, your maintenance is really good and uh, sometimes you've got to replace. Thank you. Uh, I, I've just got a, a quick couple of comments sure. and um, you've got $11,000 in repairs for these vehicles and um, the, I guess the logic is that uh, 11,000 repairs generates a $400,000 purchase order and I'm not getting that logic so I'm not supporting this um, and I, I hate to say that when you're not feeling well but um, uh, I've, I've done this so it would take um, 40 years at this maintenance schedule let me, let me, let me, let me, let me just finish it would take 40 years at this maintenance schedule mm -hmm. to uh, um, overcome the purchase price. 
uh, having worked uh, at a nuclear plant, uh, an engineer battalion, uh, and uh, been part of uh, that Seabrook uh, project over there for four years. Uh, construction vehicles are going to have corrosion. Our public works vehicles aren't the dog and pony. They're not the fire truck. They're not their their workhorses, their animals. That's always been my experience, both uh, uh, with the military and with um, heavy, heavy construction. So j having reviewed your, your synopsis of maintenance, again, uh, last year was $11,000 in maintenance, and we're talking uh, replacing that, that that necessitates a $400,000 tax <laughs> expenditure. Uh, again, there were uh, close to $10 million in requests for this warrant articles, and, and this is my first no for the night, more to come, but I, I'm not supporting this. Is there a motion? No, I, have, I have a quick observation. First of all, it's not until the past two or three years that the vehicles in Public Works Department have been maintained. And number two, we have no adequate facilities to wash the vehicles down or to store them out of the elements. Uh, I will move to approve this to go on the warrant. A second. Second. Can I speak to the Please, one go ahead. that you raised before you vote? The idea of this, this 385 uh, was last year's appropriation, 382 is this year's appropriation. Um, we were tasked before with coming up with a CIP plan mm -hmm. that looked at taking out the highs and the lows and coming up with better planning. And to be honest with you, these four trucks address that because if we don't replace these two trucks next year, well, if we don't, there is a plan. And if these trucks are not replaced this year, they will be replaced in future years. Yeah. Not at a significant additional cost, but the issue that I think we'd be facing is too many things within the same year and then people would come back to us and say you should have planned it better we heard that we've heard that before yep. other boards that public works department yeah you need these things and you have all these projects you need to do but you need to plan them out better mm -hmm. that's what we've done okay well you've got plenty planned tonight um there's a first there's a second all those in favor and years of neglect it's three in favor all those opposed two three to two Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Chris. Okay. Now, are you, you? I know you got to get out. Is there another? No, that's one? fine. You're I'll, good. I'll do the others. Drive safe, my friend. Hope Thank you feel you. better. Thank you. Let's get into the uh, Exeter Road. Do you want to do that right let's, now? Let's let's do it. <laughs> Article seven. So, um, you as you know, Exeter Road is our top priority. Um, put together a warrant article for $5.8 million. I've given you a number of alternatives uh, to look at. I, I understand there is some concern with that amount of money. The first alternative is to do a, uh, simply a shim and overlay of Exeter Road. That would be from the overpass to the railroad bridge. And uh, that would be at a cost of $320,000. Uh, that is just going to create a, a, a smooth driving surface uh, for the short term. Uh, it should not be looked at as a long-term fix. Uh, the second uh, option would be that I've outlined is to replace the sewer system and do a shim and overlay. The advantage of that is that if we phase the project over a period of two or three years, we could get the sewer work done initially and it would give a year or two for the road to, to, to compact um, and, and just get that work out of the way. That's going to be much more uh, involved than the storm drain system. And then we would do the storm drain system when, in fact, at some point whenever we do the full reconstruction project if that moves forward. Um, and that's at a cost of um, $1,584,000. Third option that I've put on is to um, d replace the sewer system, do the shim and overlay, but also add the downtown drainage project to this. And the reason that I've done that is because we had a meeting a number of weeks ago where we discussed the downtown drainage project and the FEMA funding, and there seemed to be support from the board to, to move forward with that project, but there was no funding allocated for it. So as it stands right now, without some form of funding for next year, we will be losing out on the $150,000 federal money and the project won't be getting done for the downtown project. So it's just another option that I've outlined 
uh, for you, and that would be a total cost of $1.8 uh, $1 million. Uh, the advantage with that is that uh, as far as the downtown drainage project goes, that I feel that that would um, we would see better pricing for the downtown drainage project as well as getting the $150,000 grant um, because um, it would be bid out with a much larger project and it would attract uh, bigger contractors to come in and do that project. So I think we'd get the biggest bang for the buck if we were to include that. But that would only uh, work if we were to replace the sewer main in, in the house service as well. And then I didn't put it down as an alternative, but an, another option is certainly just to put the project on hold and just continue to do what we've been doing, and that's patchwork and to patch the road. So I can answer any questions, but um, those are really what I see. Um, I want to reiterate that, you know, from a public works director's standpoint, uh, and, and looking at, we've got 77 miles of roads that we're way, 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 way behind in maintaining uh, and that we've gone out and evaluated all the town roads from looking at um, the condition of the road and the use of the road and we have definitely uh, prioritized uh, this section of Exeter Road as, a very, as, a, as the top priority as far as the road management plan goes. Um, so whatever this board decides is I'll make the best of and do the best job we can with uh, whatever your decision decision is okay thank you and we're just going to deviate this one because mr. Welch has got extensive experience in this he's, he's worked this issue we've gone from a high of 5.8 million dollars on this project down to 300,000 and change that's quite a wobble and <laughs> mr. mr. Welch um, uh, could you please uh, have your comments and then we'll go to Selectman Wilson. We'll Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I don't know about the wobble part, but uh, <laughs> uh, certainly that's a big change in, in, in uh, the way that the director has placed it because the Shimon overlay, and I'll, I'll state this, it says approximately $320,000. I think we have to do better than approximate. Um, if I were doing this, I would be going out to the three or four major uh, companies that would be doing this work and, and getting a, a real hard and fast estimate based on what they could do the first thing in the spring. Uh, the thing I'm concerned about is that the $320,000 for the overlay doesn't address the engineering cost to do the final engineering plans. Um, I can't see appropriating $5 million and having the bond issue sit there uh, with money available to do this work and we don't even have the engineering plans done. I think that's just, we have the preliminary done, we do not have the final, we do not have state approval, uh, we do not have permits in the state. Uh, we all need all of that before we can do any of the sewer work. And they're going to be right down our case until we get it. I would think that if you're actually contemplating doing the sewer work, that you would do the $320,000 worth of overlay and do the engineering work for the sewer plan and the drainage plan now. Uh, that will not be outdated, and the state's approval will not go away. Uh, even if you had to sit it in the shelf for a year or two, that money would have been spent, it would have been designed, and you'd be shovel-ready and ready to go out and do the work. And then you could appropriate the money to replace the sewer when you see the need to replace it. And that will depend upon how the taxpayers feel about it. Uh, the alternative is to simply shim and overlay the road, and keep on shimming and overlaying the road until such time as funds are available to replace the sewer, which needs to be done ultimately. Um, it doesn't make sense to me to just do a piece at a time that way. And, and uh, let's face it, if we do, let's say we do the shim and overlay in 2015. 2016, we come back and ask for X number of hundreds of thousands of dollars to finish um, all of the engineering work, get the state approvals, uh, based upon the state's speed, uh, that will tie us up for a major portion of the year. Uh, the engineering work has to be done. The plans have to be formulated. They'll go to the state. The state will have umpty umpty changes. Um, so that's 2016. 2017, we start working on the sewer. Uh, assuming we can get it all done in one year, and I think that's a big bite, um, then perhaps in 2017 or 18, we can actually get to the point where we might start preparing the road for work. 
So we're talking about a project now that's four or five years down the road, maybe longer, and to get it done and done right, and to get it done with the appropriate work and, and plans in hand, uh, this is premature. I think we need to th seriously think about just two things. One is the overlay of this road, seal it, uh, and I, I agree with the director, this is a temporary patch. It's nothing better than that. And it's going to be deteriorated in four or five years, and we're going to be back to have to do the same thing all over again for another 300 and X number of thousands of dollars, and I don't think 320 is maybe the right figure. But we don't know that for sure because it's only an estimate. Um, if we're going to do the sewer, then we need to plan that now. We don't have that figure. Um, it's not here. I've looked through the, the documents. I don't see the figure. I see the replacement for the sewer and the house services at a million two. Million two sixty four. Um, you're not going to do that work at a million two sixty four without the plans. We don't have them. So I think we're jumping ahead here, hoping we can get things done in fairly short order. And I don't know that we can, uh, given past in, uh, instances where we've dealt with the state, and they've gone through these things with a fine tooth comb. It can take months and months and months and months and months for approvals. Um, I don't think they're in the process of expediting approvals for street repairs and replacements. So I think that you need to make your decision based upon what do you want to do in the long run and how long, how many years do you want this to go down the road. Um, there is a need to replace the main, and I think we all recognize that fact. Uh, the question is how great is that need? Um, what portions of the main are no longer suitable for use and must be replaced immediately and what portions are not? I don't have that information. I don't even have the plans. So I don't know how you can replace the sewer without that information. I think you've got two decisions to make. <coughs> shim and overlay and prepare the plans or just shim and overlay. Okay. And, and just before we go to you, Selectman Wilson, just for situational awareness, um, and the shim and overlay would be optioned or payment uh, number two here uh, at $320,000, is Approximately, that Approximately, yeah. <laughs> Approximately. Okay. Well, that's... That's it. That says it does say the total. There is a um, a minor, so three hundred twenty thousand for the Shimon overlay. Is that correct? Right. And if I may, the reason if if we're just looking at going down a road that's in fairly good condition, <clears throat> and putting an inch and a half overlay on the road, I could have a, a number that would be uh, wouldn't be as much of an approximation. But when you add in there the shim. You don't know that until the pavers get out in the field and we're out there and you got to look at the, it, it's really artistic work to, to, to eye that and to see where the shim is needed and that's really where the variable is and that's why we call it an approximate cost. Okay, we're going to go to Selectman Wilson now. First of all, patching the road and I will say I'm heartily tired of driving over the lumps in the road. Patching the road in November is no help. If any of this stuff is going to have to be done, it's going to have to be done in decent weather, and you haven't got the manpower to do it. You'd have to call in outside people. I have no faith at whatsoever in the engineering work that has been done on this, none whatsoever. I would like to see an RFQ out before we do anything else at all. I don't want to pay for shimming or any other stuff. We need sewer, drainage, and a good road surface. I'm not going to touch any of this. I want to see us go back and see what we can do. First of all, focusing on engineering and forget all the patchwork stuff. I, I, I'm not going to pay any more money on this thing until we have a plan and we can do it all at once. All at once. We've got to do the sewer. The drainage is terrible, and we've got to do the roadway. I want to see a complete plan by qualified engineers to do that. Otherwise, forget it. And as far as I'm concerned, forget it. Right now, boom. Thank you, ma'am. Select Gone. Griffin. So, Mr. Welch, which were of these three did you lead us to? I think at the moment the uh, shim and overlay is about the only thing you could do. I think uh, so one. Mrs. Mrs. Wolsey is correct that you don't want to keep on doing this down the roadway, um, there are some additional options that you can use, such as putting a, uh, a geotextile after the shim is down to help lengthen the period of time, but it's not going to do you more than five or six years in total 
uh, to keep that road smooth, then it's going to start to break up again. It's it just the way fix, it is. Doesn't fix the sewer. Well, the okay, sewer. Let, let's let, yeah. let Mr. Gupis, please. Thank you. The sewer needs to be replaced. The, the question is, where are the plans? Yes. Okay. Thank and you. and without those plans, I can't. I, as an individual, can't recommend that you go ahead and do anything more than the shim and overlay to keep the road smooth. So. Traffic can go down it. We can plow it. We can maintain it. We can do things with it until we get the the rest of the material done. Thank you, sir. So, so do you recommend one? I recommend doing the shim and overlay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And that that price was the three hundred twenty thousand dollars. Approximately. And Approximately. I understand the director's comment that you don't know what the shim is going to be until you get out there. And I think if that shim is underestimated, then you're not going to be over, be able to overlay the entire road. Mr. Bridal. My only question is, and I agree with you, we at least need to do something. I know it's a temporary patch, but the road needs to be smooth. It's the, it's the gateway to our community. Yeah. Uh, everybody drives it. It's so I drive it three or four times a day. Same here. It's the worst road in town. Yep. Um, but I can't see spending the 5.8 mm -hmm. without first knowing what we're spending it on. Yep. Um, if, if this if this thirty two hundred thirty two hundred thousand yeah three hundred twenty thousand yeah okay three hundred twenty thousand keeps us puts us out a few years so we can get that work mm -hmm. I'd be all for it but should we have also have an article now for the funding of some of the engineering work well you have a choice you can you can do two articles, one for shim and overlay and one for engineering, or you can combine the two into one. Mm. Um, if you're going to seriously replace a sewer, and I think ultimately you have to do that, Absolutely. then I, I think you need to, in fact, pony up the money to do the engineering as soon as possible. Correct. Whether you do that in a separate warrant article or not is a, is a question, because I don't know what the engineering is going to be, because I don't have a figure for it. We have probably an estimate for it, but we don't have a figure for it. And you're going to have to go out and get that figure. It's going to have can to we, be something concrete. Can we do that before? Oh, I think the director can do that. I, I'm not questioning his ability to do that. I think he can do that. Mm. Uh, and the engineers are going to have to come back with a not to exceed price. You mean before the before the warrant article? Before we before you go to town meeting? Before you go to deliberative session? Correct. You have to know what you're going to do to present it to deliberative session. Otherwise, people will never have an idea what they're Absolutely. talking about. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I, I can support the 320,000 for the for the overlay, and but I'd also like to see us come up with a with a figure for for the engineering so we can get it. And we have to do it sooner than later. Um, this will give us a couple of years to shim an overlay, and then we can move forward. Thank you, Mr. Waddell. It's obviously is a huge problem. Mm -hmm. It's obviously a problem that has to be dealt with, and it's obviously a problem that has not been dealt with, yeah. which makes it harder for the director to do his job, That's right. which I think is very difficult. And I think it's not only driving over and going over bump and having a bumpy ride. I think it's a safety issue yes. mm -hmm. because people see a pothole and all of a sudden they mm -hmm. swerve one way and you're yep. coming the other way. I think it's a danger issue. So Absolutely. I think it's, it's, you know, and if we're going to put an article together, we need to put an article together that's comprehensive and deals with what we need to deal with. So that we're not doing three hundred and twenty thousand, and then five years. Well, we got to do another three hundred twenty-five thousand. Yeah. Oh, we got the wrong engineering firm to, yeah. to come in and look at it. So now, so I mean, we've got to give the DPW the ability to do the job they got to right. do. I think that's very important, and I, I, I think it's uh, you know, and we, and we got to get out there with a good plan that's comprehensive and get something done. And approved by the state. And approved by the state, but okay. We got to work cooperatively here and get it done. Here's here's where we're at. We 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 have um, a five point eight million dollar request for a warrant article. That's 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 what the selectmen have been provided with. Out of that five point eight million, and we've talked to this. Mary Louise Wolsey, Selectman Wolsey, has expressed uh, some degree of doubt about the current engineering platform. To put it mildly. Uh, the $5.8 million out of that construction subtotal for actual, if you would, boots on the ground is $3.7 million. So there's $2 million in there, and I think that's excessive. I, I, I just don't think that's a standard that, uh, that we can tolerate. Then we, we come to this evening where we've got three or four other issues. 
I think it's prudent that we, we follow the advice of um, the Public Works Director this evening and Mr. Welch that it, in, in taking into those safety considerations on that road, pave and shim, uh, come up with a hard figure, get rid of this nonsense, shelve it because it's not doing anyone any good, and come back next week with something that's much more tightened up under Article 7, and then we can vote on it. But, I mean, unless someone's going to do the language right now, this, this is a Bible. And it's messy and it's yeah. sloppy. Not in the seat of your pants. I don't, that's the right. wrong Just thing to do. One quick follow-up. Yes, ma'am. I will vote for a figure, and it better be a good figure, by qualified engineers to do the study. I would like to see that separately. I will not support the shim and whatever okay. at all until we understand where we so, are. With go the ahead, engineer. Mr. Griffin. Um, has that, but I was at the um, Hampton Area Commission this week. We had a presentation from, I'm, I'm not clear about the name of the company. Is it Tech? Tech, yeah. yes. Have they been part of anything, uh, any discussions that you've had? I've never heard of them, no. Well, they're the ones that are uh, now year-round down in the casino building. Uh, they're renting there. Uh, and uh, it seems they seem to have a uh, oh. lot of experience, and they're doing all sorts of work uh, downtown Lawrence and all, all these other areas, Londonderry, and uh, they seem very active to, uh, you know, to want to be in business in this community. They have other offices, of course, but I would hope that maybe they would be one of the groups that might get to. Um, to make RFQ an RFQ, they seem to be looking to do business with Hampton and the Seacoast area. With with all due respect to the chairman and to your mm -hmm. uh, opinion of the engineers, Chris Jacobs and I have thoroughly reviewed that report. We're both engineers. Mm -hmm. um, I've got 30 years of engineering experience. He has around 20 years. Yeah. The problem isn't with the engineering. The engineers did what we asked them to do for the price that we uh, they, they bid on. So I just want to make it clear that from our standpoint, Chris and I have discussed this, the engineers did a fine job. The $5.8 million at this stage in the game is prudent because of we're only at a preliminary design. And I will remind you Okay, that, can I just, can I, okay, with all respect enough, to you, yes. and the 5.8 by I'm, the, by the, by the I but gotcha. the elected board here is, is, is not going to happen. Mm -hmm. I think we had a consensus that we're coming back at Pave and Shim. We're going to drill down on some numbers, and let's not talk about something that no one's going to vote for right now. I, I just, with all due respect, I just wanted to qualify that I think the engineers is getting a, somewhat of a bad rap for engineering when I think that they've done a good job. Okay, that's been duly noted. Now, um, do we have a consensus on that? There's going to be no yeah, vote on this. We're going to bring it back next week. Yeah. New wording for Shimon Oldley. Yes, with the price. <laughs> and Mary Louise has expressed one interest in some engineering. Yeah, one qu well, one quick follow-up, yes, too. Because I took a look at the plans and I watched the presentation and all this stuff. I'm looking for sewer, drainage, and road. I don't care about little flashy lights. I don't care about little crosswalks. I don't care about sidewalks that curve wherever the devil they curve. I want to see sewer drain and road period okay that's it I, I just have a follow-up yes sir I just want to agree with with the director that yeah. we've got it that if we've got people in a position and, and they have experience and they when we and we go out and hire a firm we gotta we gotta pay attention to what they're doing they I just want to support guidance. them on that they, they did what we contracted for right. them to do with the amount of money we had appropriated for them to do it. Mm -hmm. That money's been spent, the preliminary plans have been designed, but the final plans have to be designed mm -hmm. and have to be brought forward for approval, all the necessary agencies. Well, that's that's what we are next. That's why I say, let's do it correctly. Right. Mm -hmm. So just so I'm clear, what you want next week <laughs> is the wording for Shim and Overlay and the potential for engineering to do mm -hmm. the sewer and drain as well. Yeah. Is that correct? Separate, separate though. Two separate wording articles. Yes. Yeah. Very good. Does that work for you, Director? Sure. Okay, great. Thank you. So we're off. Seven, we are now going to Article 11, the West Side Sewer Replacement, sir. Oh, yes, um, Warner Article 11 is um, to look at completing the work on the west side sewers of Ashworth Ave, 
uh, specifically on Hobson Ave, Johnson Ave, Riverwood Terrace, Fellows Ave, and Harris Avenue. Uh, this work has already been engineered and designed. It was part of the work, the design work that was done when they did the beach improvement project. Uh, and I did ask the company that did that design to use the numbers that they had obtained from the work that we just did down there to come up with this estimate, and that's the estimate that they were, uh, had come up with. Okay. And uh, just before we go to Mary Louise, um, it's $1.1 million. My, my, I have no engineering. I've got a July 14, 2014. I've got five pages, and that's it. That's what I have. Been provided, and I think that's yeah, pretty consistent with the rest of the board. Yes, that's the, that's what I asked them to do is to come up with that okay. estimate. All right, so I'm, I'm just making you know I'll, I'll come to my point, but I've got four pages here, and it's it's hard to make a decision on what we're really doing. Select one, Wilson. When was Aquarian notified of this project? To do Aquarian partnered with us on Perkins and Auburn, etc. They do their budgets ahead of time like we do. I asked, I think, last week if Aquarian had been contacted, but it's because it seems to me that it is only prudent to marry up yep. the water line replacement with our sewer replacement. It was very successful on Perkins and Auburn, and I would like to see that continued. Apparently, um, in his report to us, uh, Carl McMarin uh, had no indication they've already planned for 2015. He has no indication of construction, potential construction in these streets. I don't want to see sewer replacement work done on those streets unless it's paired with water replacement. Period. Select McGriffin. I don't have anything to say right now. I think it should be. Uh um, I mean, it needs to be done. The infiltration down there, uh, we're paying to treat water that we yeah. we don't, but uh, we need a little bit better planning with with our little utilities. You got to so chew up the streets again for the water. Well, that's why I'm saying we need to have a little bit better planning there. So. Okay. Select so Modell. I'll go with what Rusty just said. Okay. Uh, I, is there a motion? I'm not okay. buying it. There is no motion on this. Um, we'll move on. Article 14, Road Improvement Capital Reserve Fund. I will move that, Mr. Chairman, uh, especially since it uh, asks the public to raise and appropriate the 300000 I think that will put us around 900000 for the Road Improvement Fund. Correct. With no authority to withdraw, Correct. thank heaven. So I am moving that we approve that. Okay. I would I would just offer this as a as a caveat in in my my evolution and thinking is we we talked about the eighteen million and no no need to tax our our citizens anymore. Yeah. This is a perfect example where we already have the money in house. Uh, we're going to have a, a discussion on this next week and perhaps discuss it. But it's three hundred thousand. We have eighteen million dollars. If the board approves and the people approve, then we don't have to tax them another additional three hundred thousand dollars. If the average person's paying four or five grand, that's sixty people that we unnecessarily tax. So I'm just putting that out as a caveat where, where I am not prepared until we have the discussion on the eighteen million to to go ahead with this, sir. Well, select my Griffin. Wait, well. Nothing. I have nothing to say. Um, nothing at this time. Okay. No, not this time. I, I want to respond to that because we don't know any time frame right now. If, if former boards <coughs> of selectmen hadn't stripped that fund, we would have had enough in there to do some major projects. And I still think it's prudent to try to get that fund in place. We can discontinue the fund okay. if we get authority to go ahead. But we've got to do the road. Okay. There, there's a, a, a motion. Is there a second? Are you going to hold? Carry over? Uh, well, well it's the, the, do you want to discuss this next week? Post well, no. I just, I'm happy to move that we, uh, we propose to the public to add the 300000 okay. to the there's, existing road you made fund. The motion. There's a motion. Is there a second? Thank you. Any, second any further discussion? All those in favor? <clears throat> Bridal, Waddell, Woolsey in favor. All those opposed? 
Griffin and Dean. That's three to two on Article 14. 14. Article 15, Highway Block Grant. Sir. Uh -huh. So this is uh, looking to appropriate the sum of $267,649 for improvements to the street and sidewalks, including Belmont Circle, Fairfield Drive, and Ruth Lane. Uh, basically using a portion of the funding from the state highway block grant, which is estimated to be that same amount. Thank you, sir. Selectman Wilson. Yeah, I want to, uh, let's, and it may have been the, the way I read this, why are we voting to raise and appropriate 267-649 if we are getting, if we're getting the block grant? That's just going to give us authority to expend what we're getting in, because this isn't going to impact the tax rate. See, it says fiscal impact note. The estimated tax impact is 0 .0096, 0 0.096 per thousand. If this is a block grant, why are we raising and appropriating and, and showing a tax impact? Because it does have a tax impact. These are funds that are derived from the state of New Hampshire. Yeah. Every time they set the tax rate, they plug these dollars into the tax right. rate calculation right. as a revenue only. Okay, so we're spending money that would otherwise be surrendered to revenue. That's Therefore, correct. Therefore, we're but talking about But it the wouldn't tax. be surrendered to the roads. The question is, do you want to surrender that money to operate on roads? In which case, you need this warrant article, okay. as other towns do. So we're, so we're segregating the, the highway block grant strictly for these roads, period. It basically gives Public Works oh, the yeah. ability to spend 200 okay. and some odd thousand dollars okay. additional money to start improving the roads yeah. in town that we're not doing anything yeah. on. I like that very much. I was just a little concerned about the tax rate impact part. I also move that we adopt that and put it on the warrant. Thank you. A second? Second, second by Waddell. Selectman Griffin. No. Selectman Brown. Yeah, town manager, why are we given this block grant? The block grant is given specifically for work on public uh, class five highways or class four highways maintained by the town, which basically are the compact roads. Um, the way the Constitution has this structured is that the state is required by the Constitution to give us a portion of the monies raised from fuels. Mm -hmm. That money is to go to the cities and towns for maintenance of, of class five or better roads that the mm -hmm. town is required to maintain. And what we've been doing with it is we have been putting as a general revenue yeah. to buy, I don't know, <laughs> pens and pencils and paper and, and other things, but not giving public works anything right. of these funds to actually work on the roadways. So the question is, should we do that? And if we should, then we need to have a warrant article to authorize this money to be spent specifically for that purpose. Well, I, I believe that if the state gives us that money to, to do that work with, then I think we should do it. So I'm yeah. supportive of this. Rusty, don't look a gift horse in the mouth. <laughs> Mr. Waddell. Yeah, I support it also. If it's money that's being paid for the roads, then it should go to the roads. Yeah. And that money will continue to increase because of the increase in the gasoline sales yeah. tax. Yeah, I mean, that was one of the big squawks that people said that they're paying a gas tax and it's not <coughs> going to the roads. Right. It's going right. to other places. So right. It should go to yeah. where it should be. And that's what's been happening in the towns. It's not going to the roads. Yeah. It's going to other things. Yeah. Fred, we'd be setting a precedent this way, though, so every year we'd have to put a warrant article on to, to authorize us to expend whatever the highway block grant is. Will this be ongoing? It will be ongoing. Okay. Thank Good. You. Uh, we have a motion. We have a second. All those in favor? Unanimous. We are now at Article 20, Update the Master Drain Plan. Sir. So this is, um, I'm looking for an appropriation of $100,000 to update the 1986 Master Drainage Study. I would originally put this in as uh, a request for my operating budget but it got with help withdrawn from that. So this is a second attempt to, um, to fund that uh, work. Um, this is just as it is. We have a 1986 master drainage study. In the meantime, we've had considerable growth in the town, zoning changes, and um, we have gone through the town. We've surveyed the storm drain system for the first time. We've got accurate maps that show the storm drain system. We are presently going around town taking um, elevations, so we'll be able to put elevations on all the pipes and structures. So 
before we come up with a master plan of how to start making corrective action, just wanted to have something to use as base material for that, and that would be what this is for, is um, for that purpose. Thank you. Uh, we will hear from the town manager, Mr. Welch. Uh, I tried doing this in 2007 or 8. Uh, the town was not in favor of it at the time. I'm still not in favor of it at this point in time for the reasons the town has stated then. Um, I've got a copy of the master drains plan upstairs. It was done a few eons ago. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and, and you're correct, the town has um, evolved during that period of time. The real issue I see here is that if we're going to work on drainage, the only way to effectively do that is to do projects and to engineer those projects as you go along. Trying to throw together a major master drain plan for every bloody drain in town right. and, and, and assuming there will never be a change to that in the future is just crazy because we don't control that. Now, it would seem to me, and I, and I looked at this before, um, and we've talked about prior public works directors about this before, uh, if you want to do the drain work, that's fine. I have no problem with that, and I encourage it to be done. You need to start at the outfall and work upstream. And until you do that, the system doesn't work. Uh, we keep on adding things in and adding things in and adding things in and adding new subdivisions in without any um, idea of what that impact is uh, for the town. Uh, I'll give you a good example. I, the director's been working diligently to try to get the High Street Lafayette Road drainage system done. That's just a little tiny spectrum of what needs to be done out there. Uh, we have probably the need for a, I would think, at least a 60-inch culvert running down the railroad bed and going down yep. with it where it drains off now down behind the, the depot down towards uh, the mill into the wetlands. Um, that's not going to show that on this. There's a whole bunch of things we need to do and we're not doing them. We need to take those things under consideration, yes. But to spend $100,000, I'd rather spend that on drainage. Mm. Okay. Um, questions for the director? For the well, I, I agree with you, Fred. So you're talking basically project by project, similar to what we were just discussing with the water company and the sewer. I think that's the only way you can do it. I'm also wondering if we couldn't pair up or, or at least uh, include in the discussion uh, subjects like this with the planning board. Oh, I don't, I don't disagree with that. We're just, we're just building and building and building, and what's here today is changed tomorrow. The reason we're in this predicament is because, in fact, the planning board has continued to approve things that five people have filed, and we continue to build and we have these huge uh, residential areas that have been built since the master drain plan was put into effect, mm -hmm. and a lot of them have flooding problems. Wonder why? Uh, it's because nobody has bothered to look at the outside areas and how that's going to impact. Yeah. That needs to be done through planning. We need to do better planning. Mm -hmm. We need to do more consistent planning, and we need to relieve public works from the load of having to do that. Absolutely. I agree with you on that. I'm not willing to support this article. Is it safe to say there will be a no motion on this? Okay. I, don't, I just have one question. Yes, I'm just a little confused. You, you say do project by project. <clears throat> and you say, but you, didn't you say you need a, the, a picture, the big picture of what's happening? Well, the you, master plan be the big picture? We have, I think there's what, 22 drainage districts in town. There's a lot. There's a lot of drainage districts in town. You, what you're going to do is you're going to do a snapshot of all those drainage districts, and you're going to say, okay, today you need to do this here and that there and this over here and this over here, yeah. okay, in order to take care of existing flows. The minute you add a new subdivision in, it's completely gone. Yeah. The system needs to be redone again. I, I would rather spend the $100,000 and start at the outfall end of the drainage district number one and do the whole district. Just, just finish it. Our worst flooding problems and get rid of them and design the system going upstream so that we take care of our water, our water problems and our drainage problems. Mm. To do a general overall review of the whole town and do some general um, yeah. synopsis of what needs to be done in a very general sense doesn't accomplish anything except spend $100,000, which I think you ought to spend on the drainage. It looks nice in a book, 
<laughs> and we've got tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of plans that are sitting on the shelves that are now obsolete because we've done exactly this. Right. The floor is yours, Selectman Waddell. You good? Finished. <laughs> Public Works is not an easy. It's our biggest department. It's uh, light, lights are out in Hampton. If you guys mess up in one day, you know, fire and police—they're all good too. But uh, Public Works is—you uh, guys are on the spotlight. We appreciate you being here tonight, Director. We really do. Uh, so that is not going to uh, be. So we're agreed. The motioned. Twenty's out. Is it? Twenty. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Good. Yep. Okay. Moving down, is the ice pond dam yours? No, that's wreck. Mercifully so. Uh, what else do we have here? Is, is that down? a view? I think so. Uh, do you have what? the what, Article Thirty Six? You good on that? Mr. Wells, all waste district. That's that's not public works. I think that's okay, a specialized that. article. Yeah. Okay. Keith and I both need to speak to that one. I think. Okay, so are we done with public works as we see it this evening? Am I missing any I think water? we can give you enough information on 36 without Keith here. Yeah. 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 Fred, you agree? Yeah. Okay. Keep smiling, Director. I will. Jimmy would Thanks for coming in. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. So if you go back to human services, you want to keep going from 16. Okay. How, how do we do uh, well, uh, election of officers and just, just statutory. Statutory. That's statutory. statutory. All right. Let, and let me just kind of, okay, two, three, four, five, and six are zoning. That's not in. Yeah. Article 8 will be in there from the Budget Committee, okay. so right. ignore that. 9 and 10. Those will go on Ending. when they're done. Thank you, Selectman Woolsey. Appreciate yeah. your, your jumping yeah. in there. Okay. Uh, 16. Mr. Sullivan's absolutely right. Human Service Agencies, number 16. Uh -oh. <laughs> Selectman Woolsey. I have no problem with the uh, charitable agencies okay. article. I agree. I'll move that we put it on the... Woolsey, bridal... Discussion? Favor? Jim, we don't want to rush you. You good? I'm in favor. You sit <laughs> right over me again. <laughs> <laughs> All right, my friend. I'll Thank you. That is, uh, that is unanimous. Uh, Article 17. Gentlemen, who wishes to speak I'll to that? Also move Article 17, town-wide reval, to go on the warrant. We've got to do it. Okay, and can we just um, uh, have uh, either... Mr. Sullivan and Mr. Welch just talked about the numbers and talked about it conceptually for a minute to include the price. Okay. Um, let me, since I talked to the, the uh, young man in charge of our uh, assessing department, uh, he went out and received a uh, contractual obligation from uh, the current assessing department vision, governmental mm -hmm. solutions, yep. for $146,000 to update our existing system. Mm -hmm. and to bring values up to date in accordance with the constitutional requirement that we have to is assess the town every five years. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. One of the things that, that came up during that discussion, uh, because I asked the question, I know we had started it, uh, was whether or not we had finished the measure and list of the town. And better than 50% of the town has not been done. 40% has, roughly. Um, those 40% are paying on everything in their properties that need to be assessed. The other 50 to 60% are not. Well, I didn't realize we, we were that short on the relay. Well, we have some properties in town that have not been measured and listed since the 1950s. Oh, good God. Um, the Constitution requires us to assess everybody on an equity basis equally. Uh, that's an important thing to do so that everybody is paying their fair share without question. Those things need to be done. In order to do that, uh, I know that uh, we put in a temporary employee in the Public Works Department, uh, not, excuse me, in the Assessing Department, uh, Public Works in the mind tonight, um, to go out in, in conjunction with the existing employees to finish this so that by the time the reval is done, everybody will be current. There will be no one left out. Everybody will be current that we can get into. There's always going to be a few we can't get into because the houses are unoccupied because they're living overseas or something of that nature. Yeah. But we'll get those solved as we go along. The $146,000 is a very generous contract item. What I can tell you is that if the town decides to vote this down, and we are required by Constitution to do this, then our initiative goes to the Department of Revenue, and they can, in fact, hire an assessing firm to come in and do the entire reassessment of the town, including all the measure and lists for every single piece of property, 
and you're probably looking at something upwards of a million dollars mm -hmm. that will simply be placed in the tax rate at the time it's assessed mm -hmm. with a 25 percent penalty which goes to the state this gets it done very modest amount of money um, whether you want to put the employee in here or not is is, is always an issue and what you want to do um, it doesn't cost us two hundred thousand dollars to get the whole bloody thing done and that's what's important uh, and it will go away everything will be on a clear equity base so that's the input thank you sir select one Wilson. yeah it should be better in the next reval and less of a problem very little problem because we're having to do this every five years by by Constitution state, by right. state law um, the other virtue here for some of us is the updating I'm assuming on vision appraisal well that's a wonderful tool yes so yeah so the town appraising office is not being bugged every time somebody wants to figure out the size and configuration of a property so updating vision appraisal is is critical well it's uniform and and to do it with a different appraisal firm means we have to scrap everything we've got now mm -hmm. and start from fresh mm -hmm. All new cards, all new assessment basis, yeah. uh, everything has to be done uh, completely differently, right. and that's a big expense for the town. Right. So I, I think this is uh, great, and I'm happy to support it. Is that a motion? Yes, sir, I did. We'll see. Selectman Griffin. Um, I agree. I'll second. Okay, second. You, you, you say there's some that haven't been done since yeah. the early 50s? That's we, we, uh, I asked uh, the assessor to go back and look at his database and to find out... Uh, some of them have dates that go back to 1900, which means this system was only computerized in 1950. It's just zero zero. Um, it goes back to 50 approximately. Will uh, this pick up those? Better. This will get them all done. They've already started the work in the house. Let me let me tell you a short funny story. Let me let me let me oh, get to Slack and Waddell yet. Thank I, you very I, I much. Don't want to <laughs> like it tonight before our story hour. Go ahead. I'm all set. <laughs> I'll tell you quickly. A friend of mine is buying a property in town. And I, uh, the, the, I was looking at the uh, vision appraisal description of the property. I was completely wrong because it's the house, the first house that my late husband and I purchased when we moved to Hampton. So I went to Ed and I said, "Wait a minute, this is wrong. There, there is a lot of lack of information in there and lack of tracking in there, and even just for historical purposes, mm -hmm. not just for the." So I have given uh, my current property. I have given Ed all the way back into the whatever uh, right. uh, days of the history of the property. But it's important from that aspect too. Well, we found things when we were doing the actual measuring list and started that. Yeah, <clears throat> people had done, for instance, they'd refinish basements or something of that. Yeah. It's, it's not a big expense. It's not a big assessment expense. Uh, but it needs to be listed. And in other cases, we found how homes that had the basement listed as finished, and it wasn't. Yeah. I mean, and that's reports critical. can be very inaccurate. You mm -hmm. need to check them and make sure they are right mm -hmm. and people are being assessed mm -hmm. properly. Wonderful. And Phil will tell you, from an insurance perspective, it shows finished basement. It's a little difference in pricing oh. for somebody's insurance. It's called Absolutely. the man cave, Mary Louise. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we, we have a motion. We have a second. All those in favor? Article 17, unanimous. Thank you. Article 21, energy and safety improvements to town offices. Also move that we put that on the warrant. Okay, is there a second? Second. Also, Selectman Griffin. Any discussion? Just how much is this going to save us? I mean, this is a savings, right? If we had done a, an evaluation of this a couple of years ago uh, under a prior board, and the payback was like 15 years on the energy improvements. Yeah. yeah. Um, one of the things that concern us is the fact that this building is completely encased in glass. Yeah. Uh, it should, and unfortunately, we this past year we've been through five or six tornado warnings and, and, and so on and so forth, and we've actually been through three or four tornadoes in New England. Uh, should one hit this building, this place is going to be shredded. Yeah. Uh, we need to get rid of that glass. We don't need it. it it's, uh, in the wintertime, you can actually stand outside and see the heat coming out of it. It's not very effective. So. Uh, the question, it wasn't done before because the, the improvement was 15 years out, the recoup. Uh, my question is, is the town going to sell this building in 15 years? And if they're not, then we need to do it because we'll save money. Okay. Um, is there any supporting documentation with this? Because 
I have an article. So I, I have no data. I had asked that the information that was a long range capital Does anyone have any data program on the board? be put forward. Is it in there? Uh, I didn't I, I didn't see it. If, if it wasn't in here, we didn't send it out. That's ours. So if you want a table and get you more information on that, I, yeah, I think I got a ton of information for you. And I don't have any. So okay. I'm, right. I'm not prepared to spend $100,000 based on. We'll do it on the, we'll we'll get a few the next meeting. Great. Okay. Thank you. Good. Uh, okay. Part time with John. Uh, Gaspy, 3435. Removed. That's done. You've done that. Article 25, Ice Pond Dam. Ah, Ice Pond Dam. I am opposed. Uh, this, uh, the Ice Pond Dam was uh, consisted of boards that were put in place as the fall season came on to catch the water so that men could go up uh, with their horses and sleighs and whatever and cut the ice blocks yep. to bring the ice to the casino for the winter. Enough already. It, it's way past its time. It's no longer necessary. And I am absolutely opposed to putting that on the warrant. Thank you. I want to shift gears here. Selectman Woodell. No, I'm fine. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Back to you, Selectman. Keep doing that. <laughs> um, yeah. What do you have to say about this, Fred? Ice Pond Dam is one of the three controlling features that controls the drainage for this portion of the municipality. It starts over here on uh, Tuck Road, mm -hmm. goes all the way up through uh, Black Swamp, mm -hmm. um, it goes up through uh, Woodland Road, that whole area. Uh, it goes over into Northampton and then comes back down. Mm -hmm. It comes into Ice Pond. It goes underneath the road at Woodland Road and goes down through the meadow. Nilesbrook. Mm -hmm. Nilesbrook, through yeah. the meadow, comes out North Shore Road uh, and goes down through the grist mill mm -hmm. and down to um, Meadow Pond. Um, the outfall for this particular dam area is a 60 inch culvert. And when we have a heavy rain, as we did, we had flooding a couple of years ago. We have a heavy rain, that culvert surcharges. It's deep enough under the road so it doesn't come up and wash over the road, but it surcharges the entire 60-inch culvert. It does the same down on North Shore Road. Uh, and that water all ends up through the, the facility down at, uh, at the grist mill. Mm -hmm. There's no regulatory feature at this location at this time. Mm -hmm. um, this used to be flooded on a periodic basis for the purposes of cutting ice. Mm -hmm. Because the beavers have been in there flooding this area, uh, there's no control over this. The, the rock and, and, uh, and uh, wooden dam that was there mm -hmm. was taken out by the beavers and they made their own little dam which is much more effective than the one we have. We keep on pulling it out because otherwise it's going to flood houses. Um, this is a control device. The question is, do you want the same type of control device as you had before, which was hand-built and could be done again? Um, or do you want to have something that's much more engineering friendly, or do you want to have anything at all? And that's, that's really the issue. You can't be expected to put all of the water from a large portion of the municipality through a very narrow corridor uh, for discharge without some regulatory control. If you have a hurricane, uh, you're going to lose Woodland Road. It's going to go because you have no regulatory control over it. The, the idea of having a dam is to regulate water flow. And to do that, you have to have a very sophisticated operation going on. Okay, can I just jump in here for a second? I have an email uh, back and forth. I have no supporting documentation. I'm not prepared to make a decision on this tonight. I don't know if the board has any. I don't have anything. Yeah, I don't know if anything's come for conservation. I have, I have, I have no engineering study. I have nothing. Okay. Um, there is an engineering study that's been done. I do know that, but I don't know if it's been submitted. <laughs> what, what, I'm, what I'm just saying is, yeah. Um, yeah, you don't have it. I'm not disagreeing with uh, Selectman Wolsey's. Uh, so you'd like to like con con to come in and give you all the info and talk about it, or yeah. just the info? I, I would just like the engineering data. We've just heard from Mr. Welch, but I, I just. I, I personally can't say yes or no to 90,000 by just going right. off and email. He needs information. Yeah. Please. So if we can, if, if the board doesn't disagree, push that back. It's fine. It's yep. fine. Okay. Right. Article 26, remove pine trees, pine grove cemetery. Mr. Sullivan or Mr. Welch. 
I asked Mr. Chairman this be included. Uh, I talked to a member of the Board of Cemetery Trustees, two of them as a matter of fact, who would approve this. Uh, the funds would come from the Cemetery Trust Fund. These trees are very, very large. They are white pines. They're 100 feet or better. We are starting to lose those trees. Mm -hmm. And as you all know, experienced New Englanders, when you have a very large clump of white pine trees that are very tall they're and you start tall. losing some, they're all eventually going to go. Mm -hmm. These are located next to houses. Yeah. Uh, they also are located in one of the most ancient cemeteries in town. It will destroy the cemetery and certainly cause great damage to the houses abutting the cemetery. Uh, to take these trees down at this time, it's a $50,000 expense. Um, the stump removal and so forth can be done in-house by Public Works. It's not a big deal. Um, in fact, I'll be willing to, I did it in my own property, I'd be willing to operate the, operate the bloody machine. No, you won't. Don't go That's there. <laughs> you, Mr. Welch. Don't go there. This is, this is a safety issue. Okay, select my Waddell. Fine with me. Select I, was it? Yeah, just really quickly. I'd be concerned about the graves and the, the manner in which the cutting is done because I know white pines <coughs> have shallow, fairly shallow roots, but the, everything is so closely packed in there. It'll be done by crane. Individual ones will be cut, lifted out by and, crane, and but, brought so out. So you're not going to be digging out every. I mean, you're not no. going to end up by digging out graves. No, we're not. Well, I thought I'd ask. No, no, no. Okay. That's 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 verboten under state law, anyhow. Oh, okay. okay. I'm, I'm not up in my state law this evening. <laughs> Select McGriffin. I think it's a good thing. Yeah. Although I hate to see the the pine trees leave because it is yeah. a pine tree cemetery. Right. But uh, those trees have long grown, and yeah. they've uh, they now do. Present a mm -hmm. danger. Da present danger, absolutely. Yeah. So I think we ought to remove. I'm Andy. seconding Rusty. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well said. All those in favor? Unanimous. Article 29 is reserved. Article 30, cemetery, cemetery burial trust fund. We keep doing this, and I thought we had kind of cleaned it up, but. So well, we had not cleaned up. The, the legislation passed this year yeah. to allow us to pass a warrant article to uh, auth authorize this material to go automatically to the trustees. Right. And unfortunately, uh, re legislation could not be retrospective by a provision of the Constitution. Retroactive, yeah. So there's no retroactivity to this. So, so for the funds for 2014, we need to appropriate those to go. Okay. Also move. And in the future, then, we, this will automatically, the, the money will automatically go to the trustees. Yes, ma'am. As the graves are sold. I'll second. That's correct. Okay. Discussion? All those in favor? Unanimous. I'll move Article 31, the Conservation Land Acquisition Fund. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Unanimous. Article 32, Community Center Fund. And that's, I, I think oh. that can go. That can go. Yeah. What does that, that was mean? that was that was uh, be taken off the warrant. I that was simply something to uh, give to the board for thought process. Uh, it had been mentioned by several people during the course of the year. It's not something that we had intended to. Just something for your information. You didn't want to get me too excited. So not not if I can help it. No. <laughs> okay. um, see no further comment on that article. Except uh, go up, pardon me, <laughs> sir. Apparently there is. I think we want to. It, it may not be prudent to have it as a warrant article this year, but we've got to stop thinking about doing something. We need to go through a process to figure out what we're going to do. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Article 33, cemetery lot funds directly to town trustees. I'll move that. Is there a second? I'll second it. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Unanimous. Article 34. Trustees of the Trust Fund Investments of Capital Reserve Funds. Mercy. That was an article requested by the trustees. Um, legislation passed this year which allows them to, in fact, um, bill the capital reserve funds for their investment costs and monitoring. Mm. But the town meeting has to approve that. Your motion. I'll move it. Second. That been vetted, Fred, through charitable trusts or in mark and et cetera? It's, well, it's legislation. Uh, the charitable trusts approved legislation when it was filed. Oh, so. okay. So 
right. Waddell, motion, second. Did we get a second? Oh, I'll second. A second. Uh, discussion? All those in favor? You getting the hands up here, gents? Are you not in favor? Okay. That's four. Well, those opposed? Mr. Bright. Article 35. Also move Article 35. Establish town forest. The caveat. We are building on every inch of land in this community. We cannot continue to do it. The Aquifer Protection District is a joke. And we need to preserve what is left of 12 shares. Bear Path should never have been built. Sherburn Drive should never have been built. That's the last real wild land east of Route 1, probably east of 95. We have got to start preserving this. Um, we've got to do better on signage, and we're going to have to identify the exact bounds. So we have some indication of fairly current uh, surveys that have been done. But we are going to have, I think this is a start. I want to see this enhanced in coming years and make a commitment to uh, try to preserve this area, um, particularly from point of view of law enforcement, not just preserving the land, which I certainly want to see, but also to make sure that law enforcement has the the power, they may have it already, I'm not sure, to go in there and enforce uh, activities or, or prevent activities that are not appropriate, such as private cutting of town trees, which has been happening, and the young people going in there with firearms who shouldn't be doing it. Deer hunting is a whole separate uh, animal if you will. But we need to start. I, I look on this as a start, but I want to see a commitment to fine-tune this in the coming years so that we are seriously protecting this area. Selectman Griffin. Um, I don't have anything to say. Thank you. Selectman Waddell. Uh, no, I don't. Uh, you, no. Thank you. <laughs> that was a mumble. <laughs> Selectman. It, Selectman. Twelve, shares, on, yeah. Twelve shares is a very nice area, and we should try to protect it. So. Okay. Um, got all that. Uh, on Article 35, as presented, it does say number two to establish a town mm -hmm. forestry committee. Yeah. Uh, I would uh, just take issue with that. I, I like what our Conservation Commission does. We do have a tree warden, uh, so uh, would, uh, I, would, I would make the motion or, or to amend that to delete um, number two. That's from the statute. Oh, it is? It has to mm -hmm. be included? Yeah. That's why we made it for the Conservation Commission to be the, the committee. Yeah. So we'll have I'll a town forestry a committee, committee, a yeah. conservation committee, yeah. and the tree and the Conservation Commission will, will, in fact, be the town forestry committee. Right. So we'll, we'll try to get all of our conservation items in one place right. at the same time and be uniform throughout the town. And, and one follow-on question uh, for the town manager and assistant town manager. How was this town property? Was this deeded? Was this a, was this a gift? Was this some of it was a gift. Some of it was deeded to the town. Uh, some of it was tax title land. Okay. And Very old. There was an interesting article in, in the Rochester Times about uh, uh, their town forest, mm -hmm. and I that comes that. under the purview of the uh, their trust funds, trustee of the trust funds, and they're doing some very interesting yeah. stuff. So are we are we good on this legally? We're good on this legally. Um, someone come up from the from that this was. Uh, a gift that's not part of the trust. The no, use of the trust no, it has, it, it's town land. It's town. We have deeds to all this property. Uh, you might, for those who are really interested in in what's going on here, why it's called twelve shares is because somebody made a boo boo back in colonial times and gave us some land that didn't belong to them to right. two different parties, and uh, the the uh, proprietors, the original proprietors of the town, turned around and gave twelve shares out. Uh, as, as a, re, a reimbursement to those folks who didn't get their land properly. So. Thank you, sir. And we do uh, need to delineate the area at some point in time by adequate we markers. Do. And the, we commi do. the committee will take that up. We have a motion. We have a second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Who was uh, the second? I'm sorry. Bridal. Bridal. Article 36, withdrawal from the Solid Waste District. Mr. Welch, please. Okay, Mr. Chairman, uh, we had petitioned the Solid Waste District um, with a request to withdraw from the district. Um, that was, in fact, uh, approved by a vote of the district. 
Uh, this article, and, and the town had previously voted to withdraw. Right. Uh, but the, the statute requires that we put this warrant article in after the district committee votes to have the town vote okay. again. Uh, it's, it's a complicated process. And, and it's it's uh, it's typical bureaucratic gobbledygook and red mm -hmm. red tape, but in order to do this, we have to have another vote of the town in order to withdraw. Okay. The interesting part of all this is, as we were preparing, the, because we're still members of the district, is we were preparing for the new contracts for the new solid waste contracts that they're getting into. We wouldn't be a part of that, so we proposed at that time, and now I think there are four or five towns withdrawing at this right. point that those towns that withdrew could have the same benefits of participating in those contracts whether or not they remain members of the district. And we wouldn't have to pay the district fees and costs. Yeah. So that was approved uh, and the district bought that. That's part of the, the proposition. So uh, when we go out to bid, which Public Works is formulating bids now for solid waste uh, mm -hmm. uh, transportation and so on and so forth, disposal, if those bids come back higher than what the district has, we can participate in the district contracts and still not be a member of the district. Mm. Wonderful. Thank you. Select is Wendell, this questions? The final? I'm all set. Okay. This is it. This is it. This is it. Any questions? Nope. A motion and a second. I'll so move. Woolsey, Waddell, all those in favor? <laughs> Unanimous. Thank you. What a team. Okay. We are. Artic Article 37, abolish the Heritage Commission. I'll so move. Second. Waddell, Bridal, any discussion? Nope. Seeing none, all those in favor, unanimous. Article 38, taxi insurance. I this, will, I will, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. No, 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 go ahead. Mr. This Sullen. just halves the insurance rates down. It's an adjustment based on complaints from before, from a million down to half a million, I think is what it is. Li liability coverage. Yeah. Right. Jamie. Okay. Yes. Liability. We've all read that. Is there a motion? I'll make the motion. Griffin. I'll second it. Waddell. For the discussion, seeing non unanimous. Okay, I'm going, to, I'm going to abstain because I still, I, in principle, I think the liability should be higher. Yeah. Thank you. So that is four to one. Uh, Artic Article 39, and I would like uh, town manager, assistant town manager, to delineate between the entertainment and the noise ordinance for Article 39. We can jump on that if you'd like. The, Go ahead. This is a different ordinance than what we've been dealing with in the past, and the entertainment ordinance deals with dealing with our. Uh, establishments. This is the one that basically has to deal with starting your equipment and doing work prior yeah. to 7 a.m. Yeah. Um, this was something that uh, was noticed in some of the reviews, uh, and it was basically saying, "Hey, if we had an emergency or a town, right. uh, do it. We don't want to be. We want to exclude ourselves from that article in case of emergencies or whatever." Yeah. That's what that's. This is the essential. Thank you, sir. A motion. So, Bridal Waddell. Discussion. Seeing none. Those in favor. Unanimous. Thank you. No pond dam will discuss Article 40, Article 41, Christmas Parade petition. That's Have we one. received it yet? No, I don't think we will. We will. To be honest. <laughs> I say will. Senate is coming. It's we will. <laughs> we will. We will. We will. And it's petition. So Article 43, 44, and 45 are reserved. Article 42, town clock petitioned. That's another petition I do. We will go on because it's petitioned. We have done our first scrub. We have some outstanding requirements for next week. Understood. Mr. Sullivan and Mr. Welch will be on those. Yes, um, sir. Any closing comments? Yes. I really appreciate this session because I think it's been great to sit here as a board and chew things around and, and you know, beat up on the subject and work it out. Well done. I like the opportunity. Well said. Okay. Motion. Adjourn. Ah, we need military time here, gentlemen. <laughs> All right, Russ, give us the fire time. We're we'll like to do a journey at uh, 928. 21-28. <laughs> yeah. All those in favor. Second. Okay. See you, bye. Thank you.